Shabbat shalom lechem. We say Sabbath peace to you, both here in the Hebrew family of Charlotte, those online, and of course the family of Bnei Adat, who are here, uh, led by Rav uh, Baruch Yehuda, his family. We are so thankful for this uh, joint Shabbat as we get into our holy season. We thank Yah that we have the ability to be unified every Shabbat day, and we ask that he would even unify us in our land one day. And so we turn to the east, and we ask that you would silence your phones and humble your hearts as we invoke the name of the Creator to protect us in this and all of our places of worship with the Kuma prayer. Kuma Yehovah, weyafusu oivecha, weyanusu misanecha mipanecha. Kuma Yehovah, weyafusu oivecha, weyanusu misanecha mipanecha. Kuma Yehovah, weyafusu oivecha, weyanusu misanecha mipanecha. And we say, Rise up, O Yah. And let thine enemies be scattered. And let them that hate thee flee from before thee. Hallelujah. Again, we say Shabbat Shalom Lachem. And we ask that the Creator would accept our prayers in Hebrew this morning. Which are our congregational morning prayers found on the first page of our Sidur. Which begin with Baruch Yehoah Baboker. Baruch Yehoah Baboker. Baruch Yehoah Batsohoraim. Baruch Yehoah Be'erev, Baruch Yehoah Balayla, Baruch Yehoah Yom Yom, Uvaruch Yehoah Tamid, Yehoah Elohenu Bavakasha, Lisloach Lanu Lekol Devarim Raim, Sheasinu Lefanecha Yom Yom, Liot Imano Kol Hayom Haze, Lema An Chimcha Yehoah, Elohe Avraham Yitzhak Ve Yisrael, Elohe Avotenu Eli, Lishmoa Bakolina, Imtil Tsoto, Lama An Shimcha Yehoa, Hallelujah. And we said, Blessed be Yah in the morning, and blessed be Yah in the afternoon, blessed be Yah in the evening, and blessed be Yah at night, blessed be Yah every day, and blessed be Yah always. Yah, our divine power, please forgive us for all evil things that we have done, and be with us all this day for thy name's sake, Yah, the Elohim of Avraham, of Yitzhak and Yisrael, the Elohim of our fathers, and my Elohim, hearken unto my voice, I pray thee, if it pleaseth thee for thy name's sake. And we say, Hallelujah! Chai Yah! Selam! Shabbat Shalom Nachem, you may face the front. And we again say, Hi, Yah, as the prophet said, which means, as Yehovah liveth. Even th these things are true. I am Mesharet Yaakov Ben Dan, and I am happy to, uh, again, greet you uh, with the tongue of our forefathers. Shabbat Shalom Nachem. Shabbat Shalom Nachem. We are in the portion of uh, Tzal in this congregation, the second uh, portion of the book of Waikra. We have a lot to learn today. We have wonderful speakers this day. We have again Rav Baruch from New York who's, and his family who is here today to teach the portion. We have our Kohanim, our elders. And so let us even start this day off right with Zera Shabbat. Sameach Ani. This is the Sabbath, and I am happy. Ani Oheva Yom Shel Hashem. I love the day of Hashem, the day of Yam. Zed Hashabbat, Sameach Ani. Zed Hashabbat, Sameach Ani. Zed Hashabbat, Sameach Ani. Ani Oheva Yom Shel Hashem. It's the best day. Zed Hayom Ato, Sameach Ani. What is he done? 
We give you thanks again, Elohim, for the opportunity for us to stand and, and to travel and to have made it alive to this point where we are in the month of Aviv. And as the moon is getting fuller and fuller by the moment that we are able to celebrate you in the coming week, oh God, during a festival of Matzot, feasting daily on all of the, the delights that you have given us out of the earth that you have created. We ask that you would allow us to even sanctify your name in a way that all of the congregations of Israel may be familiar with. It barach with tabach with paar with romam with nase with hadar with alel with hal with halel sheme the kodsha berichu beegal be leilam in kol berchatan we shiratan tush bechatan we nechamatan de amiran be alma we meru amen o se shalom bim romau hu ya se shalom alenu wal ko Israel we meru. Amen. May your name be magnified and sanctified in the place here and abroad, oh yeah, that you have created according to your will. And be, may we be restored into our kingdom quickly and in our days. And let us say, Amen. And may his great name be blessed from now and for all ages of eternity. But may he be blessed, may he be extolled, may he be praised, may he be lifted up, may he be highly exalted. May his name, which is great and blessed, be lifted up above all praise in the song and all hymn and all spiritual song now and for all ages of eternity. And let us say amen. amen. And may he who makes peace in his highest places make peace for his people, Yisrael. Hallelujah. Chaya. Selah. Let us sing the Shema. O Shema Yisrael. Yahuwah Eloheinu Yahuwah Eloheinu 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 Yahuwah Barushem kevo, mahu tole olam, 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 Yahoo, I 
Hallelujah. You may be seated as we now pray as a family. The blessed art thou prayer, which we find in the beginning of our prayer book, is on your screen as well. And again, we ask that you would silence your phones. Please silence the tambourines so we can all pray with our whole heart, soul, and might. Blessed art thou, O Yahuwah, our power, and blessed be the works of thy hands. And the heavens and the earth were finished, and all the host of them. And on the seventh day, Yah finished his work, which he had made. And he rested on the seventh day and hallowed it, because that in it he rested from all his work, which Yah in creating had made. O thou who art most holy, look upon thy people in mercy. Hear thou us, O power of Avraham. Nurture us, O power of Yitzhak. Save us, we implore thee, O power of Israel. Blot us not out, O Yah, though our sins be many. Cast our evil doings into the bottomless pit to remain forevermore. Our hope is in thee, O Yah, and without thy mercy we have not. Father of wisdom, thou dispenser of knowledge, cause our hearts to discern and our minds to retain thy Torah. Bless Israel to know thee as we did in the days of yore. Let the sign of the Shabbat shine brightly from this thy house and from us thy people, Israel. Let our voices mingle with the hosts of heaven as we joyfully proclaim. Blessed be the name of our power and blessed be his holy day. Amen. Shema. Shema. Israel. Jehovah has made, and we will be glad and rejoice thereon. Unto thee do I lift up mine eyes, O thou that art enthroned in the heavens. Ascribe unto Jehovah the glory due unto his name. <clears throat> Worship Jehovah in the beauty of holiness. In thee, O Yah, do I take refuge. Let me never be ashamed. Thou hast given us joy in the place of sorrow. Thy truth is like a heady one. Shout for joy, O ye children of Israel. Proclaim the name of our King, to whom the sun doth shine and the winds sing. Jehovah is our sun and shield. Who then could master us? To the power of our fathers do we give honor and glory. For who is Yah beside thee? Be thou our judge, O Yah, against him, all the nations. Save us, O our King, we beseech thee. And shall we come clapping, singing, jumping, shouting, praising, crying, and extolling thy holy name? For with thee is the fountain of light, and in thy light do we see light. Thy loving kindness, Yah, is in the heavens. Thy faithfulness reaches unto the skies. Depart from evil and do good, and dwell forevermore in peace. For Jehovah loveth justice, and forsaketh not his holy ones. Hallelujah. Amen. Shema. Shema. Israel.
Hallelujah. Where is the power of Abraham, who didst call our father from Chaldea? Art thou not he, O power of Israel? Where is the power of Yitzhak, who did bless him with the righteous Rivkam? Thou art one and the same, who knoweth him who changed Yaakov's name? Thou, O Yahweh, will forever remain. O Yosef sojourned in Egypt, yet did all men show him favor. Thy hand, O Yah, was with him. Thou didst help Moshe and Yisrael against Paro, who stood up the mighty Red Sea. Manna drop from heaven, sustain thy people in the wilderness. They fashioned the calf to bow down to. Yet to Yisrael, <clears throat> this thou show mercy. We give thanks unto thee, O Yah. We will tell thy wondrous works. In Yehuda is Yah known. His name is great in Yisrael. His foundation is in the holy mountains. We will sing of the mercies of Yehovah forever. Unto all generations will we make them to be known. Stay thou, O Yah, in the midst of us. Cause righteousness once more to be sung. So shall the heavens praise thy wonders, Yah. Thy faithfulness in the holy assembly. Let Israel awaken the day with their praises. Glory to Yah, now and forevermore. Amen. Shema. Shema. Israel. Thou art my power, earnestly will I seek thee. Hear my voice, merciful Father, preserve me from mine enemies. Send out thine angels to protect me, O thou that hearest prayer. With thy mighty hand, Yah, subdue all those that hate us. Remember us in mercy, Yah, and pardon all our transgressions. Accept our power that bless us. How could we hope to prosper unless our Creator protect us? We are as if we had not been. Stay thy hand, O death, for he doth forgive our iniquities. So will I sing praises to his name, that I may perform my vows. It said, praise not Yehovah, nay, nor any that go down into silence. Let's extol our power while we have life. Sing praises to our power while we have anything. Together we will lift up our voices and gratefully sing. With all not thy voice from extolling our Maker, let young and old praise him together. Let the tribes come near and testify, even the tribes of Israel, the mighty of Jehovah. Say among the nations, Jehovah reigneth. I power Israel over all the world, for Jehovah will not cast off his people, neither will he forsake his inheritance. Our testimonies are very sure. Holiness becometh the house. And now, O oh Yah, and forevermore. Hallelujah. Shema. Shema. Yisrael. Yahuwah. Yahweh, 
very beautiful. We face the front <clears throat> as we now begin the high point of our day, which is now hearing the voice of Yah come to us in its untranslated purity of Hebrew. We begin the portion of the Torah, which is celebrated here as Parashat Sal, the second portion of the book of Waikra of Leviticus, with the song HaTorah, HaTorah, Petah HaTorah, Winol Mod Achshau, the Torah, the Torah, the law of God, open the law, and we will learn right now. Atora, Atora, Peta Atora, Aksha, whereby shall we return? to thee uh, for thy word to be fulfilled oh, yeah. by thy law um, by thy law oh, yeah. in our hearts Hashem shel yam Baruch Yahuwa Yom Yom Baruch Yahuwa Tamim Uva Baruch Abad Ekra Ela Torah Mode Ani Lefani Chaya Shinatan Lanu Ta Torah Amen All of our sisters may be seated All the males rise for the recitation of the law of God We're going to be in Parashat Sao Command which is Leviticus, Waikra, the third book of the Torah, chapter 8, verses 16 through 36 in uh, the Hebrew language. Again, we will be reading uh, Parashat Sao, Sefer Waikra, Derek Shimone, Waikra, chapter 8, Leviticus chapter 8, starting at Pasuk Tet Zayin, chapter six, verse 16. We're going to end at Pasuk Lamed Wow, verse 36. Hallelujah. I will be reading verses 16 through 18. 
ויקח את כל הכלב אשר על הכרף, ואת יותר את הכבד ואת שתי הכליות, ואת חיל בהן, ויקטר משה המזבחם, ואת הפר ואת עורו ואת בשרו ואת פרסו שרף באש מחוץ למחנה, כאשר ציווה יהוה את משה, ויקרב את אל העולם. וישמחו אהרון ובנו את ידיהם על ראש העיר. אמן. תרגום בבקשה, translation please. And he took all the fat that was upon the inwards, and the lobe of the liver, and the two kidneys and their fat, and Moshe made it smoke upon the altar. But the bullock, and his skin, and his flesh, and his dung, were burnt with fire without the camp, as Yehovah commanded Moshe. And the ram of the burnt offering was presented, And Aaron and his sons laid their hands upon the head of the ram. Amen. Modim anachnu lach sheata hu Eloheinu veElohe avoteinu Avraham Yitzchak veYaakov leolam vaed nikraet achino oren ben Yisachar ben Yisrael. Baruch Yehovah yom yom Baruch Yehovah tamid. Amen. I hold and we'll read verses 19, 19 through 21. Why ye cut? Why ye rook? Moshe et where et ha ayil ni tach lif takau a lin takau wayak ter moshe et harosho where et harosh where et han ta kin where et ha pader where et ha Querev we et hak ra hak ra sa'im hak ra hak ra hak ra ayin rakat ba ba ma'im wa yik ter Moshe et ko ha ayil ha mis Hamiz beka ola hu lere lereka ni le halere halere lere ak slika ni ko ak i she hu lai lai hoa ka asher ziwa. Yehoah et Moshe. Hallelujah. Yeah, yeah. 19 through 21. And when it was killed, Moshe dashed the blood against the altar round about. And when the ram was cut into its pieces, Moshe made the head and the pieces and the suet smoke. And when the inwards and the legs were washed with water, Moshe made the whole ram smoke upon the altar. It was an offering for Reach Nechoach. It is an offering made by fire unto Yehoah as Jah commanded Moshe. Amen. Moldim anachnu lach sheatahu Eloheinu veElohe avoteinu Avraham Yitzchak veYaakov leolam ha'ed nikreet achinu tayel ben Levi ben Yisrael. Baruch Yehovah yom yom Baruch Yehovah tamid Ooh, <laughs> Al Rosh Ha Ayil, or Yish Kat, Wa Yek Kwak Moshe, Mida Mo, 
Wa yitain al tanuk o zen aharon hamanit wa al bohen yado wa manit hai manit wa al bohen raglu raglo hamanit wa yakrev et bene aharon wa yitain moshe mi hadam al Tanuk as now. Wa manit, hai manit, wa al bohen yadam. Hai manit, wa al bohen rag lam. Hai manit, wa yis rok moshe et hadam al hamiz beak savi. Hallelujah. 22 to 24 in English. And the other ram was presented. Yeah. The ram of consecration. Yeah. And Aharon and his sons laid their hands upon the head of the ram. And when it was slain, Moshe took of the blood thereof and put it upon the tip of Aharon's right ear. Mm -hmm. And upon the thumb of his right hand. Yeah. And upon the great toe of his right foot. Yes, sir. Yeah. And Aharon's sons were brought. And Moshe put of the blood upon the tip of their right ear yes, sir. and upon the thumb of their right hand mm -hmm. and upon the great toe of their right foot and Moshe dashed the blood against the altar round about. Amen. Amen. <laughs> We Yaakov the Olama Ed, Nikreet Ahinu Amatia Ben Lemi Ben Israel. Maruk Yahova Ayum Yom, Maruk Yahova Tami, Ubaruk Abba, Likra Ela Torah. More than I need to finish, you all are not telling you in the Torah. Amen. Ahinu Amatia is going to read verses 25 through 27. Kaf. Hey, at Kaf Zayin. Why you crave at Oh, wow. Twenty-five. Okay. Why you at Hakelev? Why at Haliot? Haliat? Haliat. Why at Ko Hakelev? Asher Al Hakwe Hakwerev? Why at Yoteret? Hakavir? Why at Shete? Hak Hak we eat hell, kill vehem. We eat show ha yam ha yami. Umisal hamatzot asher lifne Yehova lechua kalat matza achat wechala lechem sheme shemen acha achat warachik warachik echad wayas wayasem al haklav hakl Hakalavim wa al shok hayamim wa yitain el hako et hako al al kafe kafe aharon wa al kafe bene wa ya uvanal wa wa ya nef otam. Tenufa lifne Yehovah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. For 25 through 27. And he took the fat and the fat tail and all the fat that was upon the inwards and the lobe of the liver and the two kidneys and their fat and the right thigh. And out of the basket of unleavened bread that was before the Most High, he took one unleavened cake and one cake of oil bread and one wafer and placed them on the fat and upon the right thigh. And, and he put the whole upon the hands of Aharon and upon the hands of his sons and waved them for a wave offering before Yehovah. Then Achtael ben Levi ben Israel. Baruch Yahuwah Yom Yom. Baruch Yahuwah 
He's going to read verses 28, Kafhet 230, Lamed. <laughs> Kamer, Wayak Mir, Wayak Tir, Hamit Bayak, I mean Hamit Ka Al Ha Ola Mi Laim Mila Mila Lu Milu King Milu In Hain Lare Re Ak Lare Hak Ni Nikoak Ish Ishe U Hu La La Yahoa Wayi Quak Moshe Et Ha he ka ze waya wana waya ni wa ni wa ni fe wa ni fe u ten ten nu fa li li fein fein ni li fne yahowa me e Mele Meel Ha Milo Milo Ha Milo In Lamo Lamo She Ha Haya Lamana Lamana Kaa Kaa Sher Z the o o a c c b a yahoa et moshe we ye quack moshe me mish mish et mish mishemen ha mish ka umin ha Da umi hadam asher el al ha mit beka beak wa uyat al a adon aharon Al Begada Begada Wa Al Bana 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 U Na Bana Wa Al Bega B Gada Big Day Bana Bana Ito Wa Quadesh et a Aharon et Baga Bagad Baga Begado Bigdao Wa et Ba Banao what it baga bag big big day by now 
Ito. Ito. Hallelujah. Uh, English for verses 28 through 30. And Moshe took them from off their hands and made them smoke on the altar upon the burnt offering. They were a consecration offering for a sweet savor. It is an offering made by fire unto Yah. And Moshe took the breast and waved it for a wave offering before the Most High. It was Moshe's portion of the ram of consecration, as Jehovah commanded Moshe. And Moshe took of the anointed oil and of the blood which was upon the altar and sprinkled it upon Aharon and upon his garments and upon his sons and upon his son's garments with him and sanctified Aharon and his garments and his sons and his son's garments with him. Amen. Mozim anachnu lach sheyata hu Eloheinu hu Elohe avotenu Avraham Yitzchak hu Yaakov de olam ha'ed nikra et achotenu Hamania bat sar haron ben levi ben Yisrael Baruch Yahuwa yom yom Baruch Yahuwa tamid Amen. She will read from verse Lamed Aleph 31 to Lamed Gimel 33. Wayomer Moshe El Aharon, Wa El Banal, Bashlo Ed Ha Basar, Petak Ohel Moed. Wisham toklu oto, we et halechem, asher basal hamilu im, ka asher tiweti lemor aharon uvnau yok luhu. We ha noter bevasar uvalachem baesh tis rofo, rofu saka. Umip U mi petak o hel mo aid lo tets u shiv at yamim ad yom melot yame melu melu akem ki shiv at yamim yemale et yedkem. Amen. Hallelujah. Verses 31 to 33. And Moshe said unto Aaron and to his sons, Boil the flesh at the door of the tent of meeting, and there eat it, and the bread that is in the basket of consecration, as I commanded, saying, Aharon and his son shall eat it, and that which remaineth of the flesh and of, of the bread shall ye burn with fire. And ye shall not go out from the door of the tent of meeting seven days until the days of your consecration be fulfilled. Amen. For he shall consecrate you seven days. Modim anachnula, sheatahu Eloheinu, Elohe avotenu, Avraham Yitzhak, we Yaakov le olama ed nikreet hamaftir la farashat sal, hamore shemuel ben levi ben Israel. Baruch Yahuwah yom yom, Baruch Yahuwah tamid, Ubaruch Abba Torah. Mode ani lefunecha Yahuwah, shenatan la nu et ha Torah. Amen. We're going to be finishing out the chapter for 34 to 36. Lamed Dalit to Lamed Wow. Ha'ashir asa bayom haze, si wa Yehoah, la azot la chapir alehem, alechem. Upetach ohel moed, tejvu yomam wa laila, shiv at yamim. Ushmaretem et mishmeret Yehoah, we lo tamutu, hi ken suweti. Waya as aron uvanayo, it kol had barim ashir si wa. Yehovah be Yad Moshe. Hallelujah. In English, third, the last three verses. As hath been done this day, so Yehovah have commanded to do, to make atonement for you. And at the door of the tent of meeting shall ye abide your mom with Lila, 
seven days and keep the charge of Yehovah that ye die not. For so I am commanded. Amen. And our Rome and his sons did all the things which Yehovah commanded by the hand of Moshe. Amen. Amen. Shabbat Shalom Lachem. Shabbat Shalom Lachem. Shabbat I trust and pray everyone is feeling great. The Mosa has given us life, Torah Yah. This week was one of my hardest working weeks. I'm so beaten up, you know, physically, extremely tired. But, you know, we know that our energy or the source of our energy is not uh, material necessarily 100%. But we get the spirit of the Most High that gives us that uh, energy to continue. So we have to not allow society and work and the system to beat us up so much that we have no energy left over to give praise to the Most High. After all, he's the one that gives us energy. Amen. So we have to ensure that he gets his just June praises. I thank you all for the family that is gathered here, those online as well, for uh, you are, you give me energy, you give me that, um, that focus to remember the, the duty that I have been assigned to stand before the nation of Israel. I thank you for the team that um, we have here in uh, the Hebrew family of Charlotte, and even the team that we are also a part of the greater Israel, brothers like Rabbi uh, Baruch. People that stand to give their lives to give praises to the Holy One of Israel. And when you, when, you know, coming out of a uh, church setting, it was, it was something that you knew you just had to do this for a few hours, two hours the most, <laughs> and then you would go back to your regular life. But in my Israelite journey, there were many way markers that helped me to become the person that I am. Not saying that I'm a good person, but you know, yeah. this person I am. Oh, you know. Progress. <laughs> Progress. Hallelujah. What I could remember, I think it was a Pesach. I think it was probably Pesach, but it's one of those holy days where we slept over. And I could remember um, Kamadia, our poet. She was um, she was in primary school. I don't. I think it's grade school you call it here. And she had come from school, so she had a school uniform on, and you know the service was going on, and she was singing. But the little child was singing with so much energy and life that touched me deeply because it's just coming into the way of life. It is like, wow, a child with so much seriousness for the Holy One of Israel. I'd never seen that in church. Yeah. You know, the children be outside playing, do, doing all kind of craziness. But that was one of the things that um, touched me uh, early in my Israelite journey. And it helped me to understand the seriousness of uh, this duty and, and this portion that we signed up for. And that we promised the Holy One of Israel, even in the days of Sinai, that we would do. This portion of the Maftir begins in uh, the seventh chapter in the book of Jeremiah, beginning in the 21st verse. I have to keep remembering this is a Maftir, not a Sidra, right? Yes. Okay. <laughs> How many minutes is this? <laughs> All right. I can do this. All right. 20 minutes. That's a line. I mean, like, <laughs> all right. So um, this portion of Jeremiah, uh, if you read it because it picks up in the middle of a thought, if you read it from uh, verse one, you would see that Jeremiah was basically, as we would say in Guyana, abusing out the nation of Israel. He was standing in the gates and just telling them off because as usual, we were 
Judah was way off of the direction that we needed to be in. One of the things in my um, assessment of the nation of Israel is that the Levites, we back in the day, we failed to show the importance of the individual. When, I'm say, when I say that, I mean that we did not make every person accountable to themselves fully in showing that we, it is up to us to build ourselves. We have to learn ourselves. We have to know our, our strengths, our weaknesses. Mm -hmm. We have to get rid of bad habits. Mm -hmm. They say the brain is plastic in, in the study of neuroplasticity, yeah. in that it's pliable, it can you know, grow, it can, it can bend to learn new habits, etc. So they, they say the pathways, neuropathways, go in the direction where there's least resistance. So we know if we have bad habits, pathways are gonna go in that direction because that's what you do. And um, in ancient days, even now, uh, we have to ensure that as, as um, last week's portion touched me so much, both they said there and the afternoon, uh, we have to focus on ourselves so that um, we can be better individuals. If you're not doing that, you're messing up the whole. Because I always speak about spiritual um, TQM, total quality management, where every person is functioning on their highest level of, of spirituality, of righteousness. So when we come together as a whole, you can see that we're moving as united front better than if we have one person that is lacking and it, it's not easy by any means, but this is our life's work. We should be striving continually to better ourselves. Amen. We pick up in the seventh, uh, 21st chapter, verse rather of the seventh chapter, it says. Hallelujah. Thus saith Yehovah, Zebah, O Elohei, Yisrael, add your burnt offerings and your sacrifices and eat ye flesh. When this, you have to understand our culture to understand these words. Uh, this week, our brother, Chief Uziel from, or Uziel from DCB, he, he's doing this um, thing where he has American, the American family trying to interpret uh, Caribbean reggae and soca songs. It's, it's, it's fun. It's nice. But if you don't understand the language and the idiomatic expressions and the proverbs of a people, you don't understand what they're saying. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So here with this, we sing, add your burnt offerings onto your sacrifice, eat flesh. We know that burnt offerings, you don't eat. That's right. So when the Mosa is saying this, it's like, just forget all the rules. It's like, it's like, it's better for you to have a barbecue. <laughs> you know, forget all what I taught you. Just have a barbecue because you, you've lost right. the, the full sanctity of what these things are meaning. So you have to understand the culture to understand exactly what the Mosa is saying. Just forget it. Y'all just do your own thing. Mm. You know, when your parents tell you to do your own thing, it's like, don't do your own thing. <laughs> like do what you want yeah just go crazy <laughs> don't so this is what the Mosai is telling the nation of israel mm, teach it, mm -hmm. teach it. For I spoke not unto your fathers, nor commanded them in the day that I brought them out of the land of Mizraim concerning burnt offerings and sacrifices. But this thing I commanded them, saying, Hearken unto my voice, and I will be your power. Yes, sir. And ye shall be my people, and walk ye in all the way that I command you, that it may be well with you. What you do when you're alone is what counts. Forget all of this. I'm not mean like forget it, don't do it, but forget it because it is not as important. Some of the greatest things that ever happen on this planet or in existence happens in silence. In total silence. One of the greatest things that happens in silence, ideas, thoughts, in total silence. But then the manifestation of them, look at them, huge, immovable. So here he's actually saying that when we came out of Egypt, the Mosai was just asking us for obedience. Obedience. So all of the sacrifices, they were just ceremonies, important ceremonies because, okay, today if you do something in, in a society that is contrary to the rules, you're fined. In ancient days, our property, our cash was tied up in our, in our livestock. Right. So many times we had to give livestock as payment for whatever. We eliminate that and look at the spiritual aspect of it. Mm -hmm. 
words that, that leave your lips. You know, they say words are but wind. That is not true. Because those words, they, you, they go into your hearing and, and they cause a chemical effect in your body, good or bad. Mm. During this season uh, of the pandemic, research has shown that divorces have increased and abuse has increased. And when we're saying abuse, we're not speaking necessarily physical, but verbal. Mm. Because people are locked together and they're now like being with someone all day. We had work that we could have gone to, you could have escaped to work and just deal with them like a few hours at night. Yeah, fake it and then run out back to work. But now you're trapped at home. So everything is coming out and they're saying mean things to each other and it is not good. You're hurting each other. My, my theory is that your loved one, your sisters, your brothers, whatever, your, your spouse, they should get the best of you. Amen. You can't be at work all day smiling with the boss and yes, everybody's nice. And then you go home and give your family the worst. Mm. That should not be the case. Exactly. So when we look at these things that the most is speaking of obedience, many times people think it's something so hard. It's just how we treat each other. Look, you'll see it. Just how you, you treat each other is extremely important. Mm -hmm. But they hearken not, nor inclined their ear, but walked in their own counsel even in the stubbornness of their evil heart and went backward and not forward. Even since the day that your fathers came forth out of the land of Mizraim until this day. And though I have sent unto you all my servants, the prophets, sending them daily, be times and often, yet they hearken not unto me, nor inclined their ear, but made their neck stiff. They, they did worse than their fathers. And they, they did not listen. It says in Hebrew, they did not stretch your ears out. They didn't take time to, you know, pursue this information. They just went after their own counsel, the stubbornness of their evil heart. Mm -hmm. So instead of them progressing, or, or I should speak, uh, instead of us progressing, we went backward. And if we are honest, we should, in this season, where we're removing the leavening from our homes, we're supposed to be removing the leaven in from our spirits, our hearts as well. All of those things, you know, the, the hearty feeling and, you know, remove it from your hearts. We have to become more considerable. Uh, cons in, we have to have greater consideration for each other. In the, because you see a person just like now, but you don't know with, with lack of emotional intelligence, you don't know what brought them to that situation, why they're reacting the way they are. So we should be more... We should be kinder in the way we treat each other, the way we deal with each other, so that we can have uh, a better nation. People that care more for each other. The foundation of the Torah is love your neighbor as yourself. In that, you have to learn to love yourself first. You have to have a high standard of love for yourself so that that can then transfer to the entire nation. So here in the portion, Mosai is saying from the days of Egypt, all, all of those times we had these bad tendencies. We have to undo them. We have to, in, in reading up for this portion, it's, I looked at some information dealing with habits. And one presenter said that um, we should not try to uh, like get rid of our bad habits in that sense. Because once you put resistance to something, it comes on stronger. He said, just replace them. Mm -hmm. That's why it's like a seesaw. You know, like you got to, push the person up and they push you up and so you're moving up and down. But if you step off the seesaw, it's the end of that. So you have to replace these habits. You have to know their bad habits, number one. This is not a good thing I'm doing. And then try to replace it with something that is more meaningful. Think about how we spend our day. Some of the phones, they come with a meter that tells you how long you spend on social media. How long have you spent on social media for the week? You know, and they break it down. Was it entertainment? Was it this, that, or the other? So it, it helps you to gauge like, wow, I wasted a lot of time. Mm -hmm. You know, what have I done to develop myself, you know, as against just, just scrolling up and down? What have I done? Mm -hmm. So as Israelites, these are things in this season that we need to think about. Unstiffen your neck. If you, The only way our neck should be stiff is to do right. Mm -hmm. Tamshi. And thou shalt speak all these words unto them, but they will not hearken to hearken. Hawking to thee, 
Thou shalt also call unto them, but they will not answer thee. Not so. Therefore thou shalt say unto them, This is the nation that have not hearkened to the voice of the Most High their power, nor received correction. Faithfulness is perished and is cut off from their mouth. Cut off thy hair and cast it away and take up lamentation to the high hills for Jehovah have rejected and forsaken the generation of his wrath. I mean, it's like, who else can you go to if you don't have Yah to help you? That is a bad situation. In this portion, he says, cut off thy hair and cast it away. The Nazir, we know that the Nazir, he would grow his hair out so that he could show dedication to the Most High. The Most High said, Allah is in vain. I don't want that. The basic, simple things. Forget all this big grandeur. The basic, simple things. When someone comes to you for assistance, do you help them? When you see someone broken down at the side of the road, do you stop it, stop and help the woman only if she's good looking? Or if it's just anybody, stop and give a hand. These are the things, these little things. In the supermarket, do you help the old ladies if they can't get up on the shelf? The most I look at, it's just simple things. I'm telling you, people think all of this big show, the things that you do in silence, that is what counts. Tamshik. For the children of Yehuda have done that which is evil in my sight. And Israel did it after, King. They have set their detestable things in the house mm. whereon my name is called to defile it. And they have built the high places of Tophet, which is in the valley of the son of Hinnom, to burn their sons and their daughters in the fire, which I commanded not, neither came it into my mind. Right. The Mosai said this whole human sacrifice bit, he never thought about it. When you think about this season that we are living, that we are in right now, where we're supposed to be refraining from Hametz and uh, Seor and Machmeset. We are in this season, but yet our Christian brothers and sisters, they're having cross buns. I mean, I'm, it's not like, I'm not sure how it is here, but in Guyana, it's like they have this thing they, they call hot cross buns, where it is like a little cupcake and there's a big cross in it, you know, for what reason in the season. So it is like totally counterproductive of what this season promotes. And, um, we see that also the, um, if you read the entire portion where it speaks of them baking cakes to the queen of heaven, right. that is what they were actually right. doing. Mm -hmm. Therefore, doth saith, therefore behold the days come, saith Jehovah, that it shall no more be called Tophet, nor the valley of the son of Hinnom, but the valley of slaughter, for they shall bury in Tophet for lack of room. And the carcasses of this people shall be food for the fowls of the heaven and for the beasts of the earth, and none shall frighten them away. Right. No one will be able to frighten away. Because, you know, sometimes you pass on the, on the highways and you see the vultures over some road kill. You know, if it's somewhere far away, no one is there to scare them away. The most I said, you're going to be in total desolation and he's going to destroy you. Then will our cause to cease from the cities of Yehuda and from the streets of Ye Jerusalem, the voice of mirth and the voice of gladness, the voice of the bridegroom and the voice of the bride for the land shall be desolate. And you could go back and look at all photographs of Jerusalem before um, the state of Israel and all of these things. You would see it was a very desolate place, you know, so the Mosai's words did come to pass. We conclude in the eighth chapter, first three verses. Mm -hmm. At that time, saith Yah, they shall bring out the bones of the kings of Yehuda, and the bones of the princes, and the bones of the Kohanim, and the bones of the Nevi'im, and the bones of the inhabitants of Jerusalem out of their graves. And you know, you know how sick that is? Is that they are, you know, defiling the living and the dead. So, you know, many times people say, uh, where's the evidence of the nation of Israel? Why they can't find a grave? Or... This, they took the bones and just crushed them up and scattered them around. So many times we don't have uh, like graves and, you know, like you could go to Ethiopia in the catacombs and you can see all of these men that lived, you know, they have them, you know, labeled and everything. In the nation of Israel, they took our bones, the kings, and scattered them all over. And they shall spread them before the sun and the moon and the host of heaven, whom they have loved and whom they have served. 
and after whom they have walked, and whom they have sought, and whom they have worshipped, they shall not be gathered, nor buried. They shall be for dung upon the face of the earth. Right. And Moses is saying, the sun that you worship, I'm going to scatter your bones before the sun and the moon. Mm -hmm. And death shall be chosen mm. rather than life by all the residue that remain of this evil family that remain in all the places whither I have driven them, saith Yehoah of hosts. Hallelujah. You know, in this season, okay, in this season, when we think of what's happening, where we had a shooting in a nail salon, I think it was. And then we had one in the supermarket. You know, and I think in Kentucky, they also found the man with a lot of explosives wrapped to him and all these things. The Mosai is the only one that could defend us. You have to go outside to get certain amenities, but you don't know what a crazy neighbor is thinking about. So we have to really get close to you. Mm -hmm. Ninth, chapter. Ninth chapter, 22nd and 23rd verse. Of Jeremiah. How to give us some hope. Mm -hmm. Thuff save your whore. Let not the wise man glory in his wisdom. That's right. Amen. Neither let the mighty man glory in his might. Mm -hmm. Let not the rich man glory in his riches. Yes, but let him that glorieth glory in this. Huh. That he understandeth and knoweth me. Huh. That I am Jehovah who exercise mercy. Oh, justice. And righteousness in the earth. For in these things I delight, save Yehovah. That's, that is our duty and purpose. Knowing ourselves. Knowing Yah. You know. Bob Marley said in one of his songs. In the abundance of water the fool is thirsty. And we are living at a time. Where water is abundant. Knowledge is out there. It's at your fingertips. Literally. But yet we are the most ignorant stage as humanity on the planet research find out about who you are as an individual you are, if you're born into this way of life dig into it why was i born into this way of life what is it about so that we can truly know it and stand in great conviction of what we're doing it's the right thing we're serving the holy one of israel nehalilah Hallelujah. Let's please continue to encourage Moray Shemuel and other in Israel. Hallelujah. 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 We give thanks to uh, Yah for allowing us to have men of wisdom, knowledge, and understanding in our midst. And you may have a seat for just a second. Um, I hope you, you gathered the, the theme. Again, the, the idea of a haftarah is an afterword for the parasha. A word of prophets, prophecy after we've read the laws of the Creator. We're going to hear a lot of specificity. There's importance there. There's holiness. There's a lot of um, duty and honor and discipline that's in this portion. Creator is not saying, of course, it's not important. But he's saying if we can't handle the basics, it's not important. But we don't have the prophets like we had because we don't have the temple like we had it in our land. And so all of those things elevated us to a level where we could have open prophecy, the things that we see in our portion to this day. Just a, one brief interesting note, because it was, as you know, a very um, heavy portion. Something to take away from this is uh, the word hell. You know, in the New Testament and in the Quran, you know, obviously the Tanakh doesn't talk about like hell, like as a place where you go, there's the devil, there's fire, right? They have to come up with a word for that in Greek, and they had to do that in the Quran too, and they talk about constantly about hellfire. You know what they say? In Greek, whenever you see them talk about hell, they say Gehenna. And in the Quran, it's Jahannam. What they're trying to say is Gehinom, the valley of the son of Hinom. So that lets you, in Tophet, Tophet means inferno, like La'afot is to bake, a place where you're baking babies who are screaming alive. That shows you just how evil the stuff that was done was. That even Christian religions that had to make up a place to scare you was that place off the side of Jerusalem, the Valley of the Son of Hinnom, where people were screaming as they're being sacrificed alive and being burnt to death. That's the imagery that they use to this day to scare us into following their religions. 
I hope you see the hidden message also in this portion is we are in control of that. We created that hell landscape. And he's saying in this portion, we can also remove that from the earth. And again, we can bring holiness into the earth. We can bring, what did they say? A new Jerusalem. They all use that language. We're the ones that are the engine for that. And that's why this portion is so important because that holiness is what will make that city, not a place of screaming and death and horror and exile, but a place of holiness once again on this earth. So again, we give thanks to you for all of our readers this morning, all of our uh, teachers who are here today. Let us rise up. And let us even give thanks to Yah for his Torah this day as we sing Ha Torah, Ha Torah, Segor Ha Torah, close the Torah, but we will learn at this time. Ha Torah, Ha Torah, Segor Ha Torah, Whereby shall we return unto thee, oh, for thy word to be fulfilled by thy law, by thy law. Blessed are those who've come. Welcome to this house of prayer. It's good to see so many of our families again coming in person. There's over 55 or so people online as well, not to mention all the people who are watching from B'nai Adat. We are happy. We're ready for a holy season. Let's start out with Adon Olam, the Lord of the Universe, which there is a link for in the browser. And it's also in our Sidurim. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yeah. Give me a beat. Olam, Adon Olam, Adon Olam, Adon Olam, Let's go. Adon Olam, Mashel Mala, Veterim Kol, Yeter Nivra, Veterim 
again sing go down Moses together across our congregations when Israel was in Egypt's land let my people go oppressed so hard they could not stand let my people go they said go down Moses way down in Egypt's land I said, Jehovah, Moses said, let my people go. If not, I'll smite your firstborn dead. Let my people go. They said, go down, Moses, way down, Egypt's land. Jehovah, let my people go. Jehovah told Moses what to do, let my people go. To lead the children of Israel through, let my people go. They say, go down, Moses, way down in Egypt's land. Pharaoh, let my people go. When they had reached the other shore, let my people go. They sang a song of triumph over, let my people go. They said, go down, Moses, way down in Egypt's land. Pharaoh, Pharaoh, let my 
people go one more time. When Israel was in Egypt's land, let my people go. Oh, that's so hard they could not stand. Let my people do some rule. Go down, go there, way down in Egypt's name. Pharaoh, Pharaoh, let my people go. A savior for a boat, Moses said, let my people go. If not, I'll smite your firstborn dead. Let my people go. I'm rolling. Go down. Go this way down in Egypt's land. Go. Let my people go. Jehovah told Moshe what to do. Let my people go. To lead the children of Israel to let my people go. I'm going go down. Moses, hey, down in Egypt's land. Hey, oh, hey, oh, let my people go. When they had reached the other shore, let my people go. They sang a song of triumphs over it, my people go. They said, go down, go this way down in Egypt's land. Oh, Pharaoh, let my people go in Hebrew. Shalach et ami, Shalach et ami. Hallelujah. Let's give praise to God again. Hallelujah. 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 Haya. 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 Say la. You may be seated, and at this time we will call for the eighth proverb and then go into the twenty-first psalm and hear the portion that's taught by Rabbi Baruch. Eighth proverb, we ask Rabbi Baruch's son, Ahmed Mahiman, I hope I said that right, to uh, be our uh, proverb reader. Ahmed Mahiman. How would you, did I say that right? Okay. And it should be up on the screen for you. And if you don't mind just saying, introducing yourself and then giving praise to the Most High and reading the eighth proverb, we appreciate it. Please uh, come right right here where we can see you online. <clears throat> and you just face the audience, just uh, greet them, you know, and uh, Shabbat Shalom. Say anything you would like. Give an honor and praise to the Most High. Absolutely. And uh, eighth proverb here. The eighth proverb. Doth not wisdom call or understand, put forth her verse in the top of high places by the way, where the past me she standeth beside the gates at at the entry of the city, at the coming in the doors, she crieth aloud. Unto you, O men, I call, and my voices is to the sons of men. O ye thoughtless, understand prudence, and ye fools be un of an understanding heart. Here I will speak excellent things, and the opening of my lips shall be right things. For my mouth shall utter truth, and wickedness is an abomination to my lips. All the words of my mouth are in righteousness. There is nothing perverse or crooked in them. They are all plain to him that understandeth right to them that find knowledge. Receive instruction and not silver, and knowledge rather than choice gold. For wisdom, for wisdom is better than rubies, and all things desirable are not to be compared unto her. I wisdom dwell with prudence and find out knowledge of devices. The fear of the Lord is to hate evil, pride and arrogancy, and the evil way in the forward mouth do I hate. Counsel is mine and sound wisdom. I am understanding and power is mine. By me kings reign and princes decree justice. By me princes rule and and nobles, even all the judges of the earth. I love them that love me, and, and, and those that seek me earnestly shall find me. Riches and honor are with me, yea, enduring riches and righteousness. My fruit is better than gold, yea, than fine gold, and my produce than choice silver. I walk in the way of righteousness in the midst of the path of justice, that I may cause those that love me to inherit substance, and that I may fill their treasury, their treasuries. The Lord made me at the beginning of his way, the first of his works of old. 
I was set up from everlasting, from the beginning, or ever the earth was. When there were no depths, I was brought forth. Where there was no fountains, I brought them with water. Before the mountains were settled, before the hills was I brought forth. While as yet he had not made the earth, nor the fields, nor the beginning of the dust. When he established the heavens, I was there. When he set a circle upon the face of the deep, when he made the when he made firm of the skies above and the and the fountains of the deep showed their might. When he gave the to the sea his decree that the waters should not transgress his command his commandment. When he appointed the fountains of the earth, then I was by him nursing, and I was da- and I was daily all the light playing always before him, playing in his habitable earth, and my delights are with the sons of men. Now, therefore, you children, hearken unto me, for happy are they that keep my ways, hear instruction, and be wise, and refuse it not. Happy is the man who hearkeneth to me, watching daily at my gates, waiting at the post of my doors, for who findeth me, findeth life, and obtaineth the flavor of the Lord. But he that misses me, wrongeth his own soul. All those that hate me, love them. Amen. Shabbat shalom. Shabbat shalom l'cha. Thank you very much. Let's give him again a warm welcome to the city of Charlotte, Mehman, Ben Rav Baruch. And let us all read the 24th Psalm and uh, prepare our hearts for receiving the, the message of the day. <clears throat> Psalm of Dawid. The earth is Yahuwah's and the fullness thereof, the world and they that dwell therein. For he hath founded it upon the seas and established it upon the floods. Who shall ascend into the mountain of Yahuwah? Who shall stand in his holy place? For he hath clean hands and a pure heart, who hath not taken my name in vain, and hath not sworn deceitfully, he shall receive a blessing from Yah, and righteousness from the power of his salvation. Such is the generation of them that seek after him, that seek thy face, even Yaakov, Selah. Lift up your heads, O ye gates, and be ye lifted up, ye everlasting doors, that the King of glory may come in. Who is the King of glory? Yah, strong and mighty, Yah, mighty in battle, lift up your heads, O ye gates, yet lift them up, ye everlasting doors, that the King of glory may come in. Who then is the King of glory? Yehoah of hosts, he is the King of glory, Selah. At this time, we would welcome back our leadership, and we would like to rise <clears throat> as they come to the uh, Bima. We'd like to give thanks to Yah for our elders, for our leaders, Sar Aharon, uh, we would like to give thanks to our Kohen, Kohen Sheit Meyav, Ben Lewi Ben Yisrael. We would like to give thanks to Yah for Rabbi Baruch, Ben Yehuda Ben Yisrael. We would like to also give thanks to the brotherhood and the sisterhood and all of those who have been teaching every day in our Hebrew school here. Let us say Hallelujah! 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 Chaya! 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 Adonai Sifatai Tiftach Ufi Yagid Tahila Teka. O Lord, open thou my lips, and my mouth shall declare thy praise, giving thanks to the Holy One of Israel, He who lives forever and ever. We bless his name for the opportunity to know him. We bless his name for the opportunity to be among those, even from amongst our own family. Please get it that he didn't just, it was no accident you're here. He chose you from amongst your own family to be in the place that you get to know that he is the king of the universe. To Adon Saharon, Kohen Sheik Mia, and all the ministers of the house, I greet you Shabbat Shalom Aleichem. To my chief rabbi, chief rabbi Kaper Shmuel Fene, 
to all the leadership of the house of Israel, wherever they may be found on the various platforms in the various cities, in the various countries. I greet you, Shabbat Shalom, to this family here present. May the Most High God bless and keep you all is my humble prayer. Hallelujah. Please be seated. Cain, Cain. Told him. You know, I'm going to start this way. I give thanks to the Most High God, and I rise to bless His name. Amen. Because the reality is, I would have my my brother. The Kohane here, he knows. I told him I was coming. I, I didn't need a space. I, I, I didn't need nothing. I just wanted to come in Amen. and worship God. Amen. Haven't been able to do this in a yes. minute. <laughs> six weeks for me. So, um, uh, six weeks, let, let's try over a year. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, I, I, I'm overwhelmed to be in the house of God. Amen. To be able to extol him, to give him. honor that he so richly deserves. I want to tell you this is God. See, let's just start. You know, in the book of Bereshi, I know we're in Leviticus, but the book of Bereshi, you know what I, that, I love that line. It says, Bereshi bara Elohim. In the beginning, there was God. Listen, there was no discussion about, is there God? Just that he created the heavens and the earth. We're not going to discuss if he exists. He exists. You know it because you exist. We bless the name of the creator because he's good to us. Throughout all of this situation, he has watched over and he has protected and he has saved. And yes, we've lost some and we've had to cry and we've had to mourn. But we know that he has seen us through. Amen. So we bless his name. You have to excuse me, I'm trying to get myself together here. You know, on the way out here, I'm gonna tell y'all a little quick story. On the way out here, I was supposed to be on a flight Friday morning at 8 a.m. Set up my flight, set up everything, but you know, computers are what they are. And I, I don't know whether I pressed the wrong button or they did the wrong thing, but I'm there arguing with the lady about my flight because I know I'm supposed to be on this plane. And then the lady said, your flight is in May. I said, May? <laughs> this ain't May. It's March. I got to go now. She said, well, sir, there's a problem. There are no more flights to Charlotte. Oh Lord, this is this is this is the issue. She she started checking on all the airlines, and she said, "You know, this is a holiday weekend." I said, "Holiday weekend?" She started talking about this spring break. It's this that. It's the other thing. There's no way we're gonna get you to Charlotte. She said, well, maybe we can fly you to another airport. Mm -hmm. Start tapping on the keys again. She found this flight. She said, it's going to take you to Raleigh Durham. She said, you'll be about two hours away. You figure it out there. <laughs> now, mind you, I had been at the airport since 530, about five, six o'clock in the morning. Yeah, I got there about six o'clock in the morning to make sure everything was right. I didn't want no problems. <laughs> Here it was. I didn't get on that plane. So after they tapped and figured out, they found out there was a flight at 2.30 that was going to take me to Raleigh-Durham. 
then I was going to have to do all this. And I, the, the priest had already called me and told me that I was going to have to do a little work today. And so I was nervous. I needed to get in before the yeah. sun went down and yeah. all of the varying things that we need to do. And I'm sitting there and I'm worried. And um, I said, you know what, Father, there's nothing I can do about it. I just got to leave this in your yeah. capable hands. So we started making phone calls and found this flight is a direct flight even though. Thank God we could, if, if, if we drive a little bit, we could get on time and, and um, get cleaned up for the Shabbat. But then they told me, listen, there, they, there is a flight to North Carolina, but it's absolutely booked. The guy said, you know, maybe. So instead of sitting at my gate, I sat at the North Carolina gate, Charlotte. And I just kept saying, did everybody make it? They said, this flight is overbooked. There's no way you're going to make it on this flight. Okay. You're going to sit right here. Sat right there. Next thing you know, red coat lady came over. Guy started whispering her. She went over there, click, 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 click. All of a sudden she said, um, the people are already boarding. She said, call your people, tell them don't go to uh, Raleigh, don't get on the plane. Hallelujah. Only one person didn't show up. When I tell you, he is God. No questions, no concerns. He is God. We bless his name because he makes a way for his people. Today we pick up in this portion of Saul. And the most high God, if you remember last week when we walked into Wayikra, he started talking about all of these uh all of these offerings and for those of you who may have heard me last week I told you that the offerings if I had to qualify them as one thing I'm going to tell you that it is grace that's what offerings are they are grace well rabbi what are you talking about they are grace they are grace because the God of heaven and earth blessed be his name he knows that we are but dust and that we make errors and we're born this way and we have these situations that come on us we get unclean we have all of these things but he's holy he said listen y'all don't understand I'm holy I'm holy you can't just roll up on me in your way I'm holy told the priest you come in here at the wrong time I will kill you yes, I don't play patty cake I don't sit down and eat tea and crumpets I'm not your friend hate to bother some of you who think God's your friend I'm just telling you God ain't your pal he is magnificent Amen. So he set up a system so that he would not have to kill you <laughs> as you violate his holiness. Come on, hear me what I'm telling you. He's telling you I'm holy in such a way that the plague will break out on you. The plague will break out on you. I, I don't even have to send it. I've already commanded in the earth. You can't deal with me any way you want. So these offerings are grace. It allows you to live the best way you can. And when you make a mistake, there's the grace that he put in there so that he doesn't have to kill you. But as I also said, these offerings, although important, although they are the law and you must obey them, not doing them, if we had the situation in that we could do it would be a violation of the law. I need to say that first, because I don't want anybody to be confused about the next thing that I'm going to say. 
I'm going to tell you, however, comma, that the reality is that the blood of the sacrifice is not the thing that grants you atonement. <laughs> See, the blood of the sacrifice is not it. So for all those people talk about how we're barbaric, uh, you want to turn back to barbaric. See, these are the kind of terms they use in order to make you feel ashamed of the things that God gave you. They use terms like barbaric, inhumane. Look at what you do to those animals. I got a son who did a, a class and a coursework and he came home, Niskia came home and he said, Abba, you would be surprised at what they do in these animal places. Even the ones that they say are kosher, they're filthy and, and, they, and they treat the animals bad and so forth and so on. What am I telling you? These people don't care about nothing about these animals but they like to use terms like that to make you feel less because how could you want to return to such a barbaric scenario what's barbaric about we're going to slaughter the animal and the priest is going to eat right and his family Right? What's barbaric about that? You eat burgers all day, so what's barbaric? <laughs> Most of the time, the things that went on the altar are stuff that we can't eat anyway. The hard fat. Right? The lobes of kidney and liver. Uh, uh, I, I don't hear much about, let's have some slices of kidney. Right. That's not how we do it. We want the rib. <laughs> yeah, that, that, you know. Come on, sir. That's what we want. Teach it, Rabbi. Make it clear. So this economic system, that's what it was. So that the priests would eat and also that those who were less fortunate would always be able to go to the house of God and find sustenance. Yes, sir. Not barbaric. This is grace. But the reality is, as I said to you before, because you read it with the blood of the sacrifice and they put it on the horn and they do this and they do all of that to make atonement. But how many of you remember reading when it said, and if you don't have the sin offering, if you don't have the goat, you bring the birds. Mm -hmm. Yes, birds? Because yes, you can't afford it, right? And then he said, if you can't afford the bird, what you got to do? Bring me some flour. Where the blood in the flour that's going to make the atonement? The atonement is made through the grace of God and through your contrition. Your ability to recognize your own fault. Mm. Come on. Come on. And to have remorse yes. for the same. Yeah. You can come up there with the biggest cow on the farm. If you're not sorry. Yeah. That's why the prophet said. Put the burn offering, the, the sin offering, the meal offering, they put it all together. And what the Mishare said, have a barbecue. Better you do that. But in this portion in the sixth chapter, it says, And the eternal spoke unto Moshe, saying, Command, oh, I'm sorry, I know we have a reader. I'm I'm so used to talking to myself on Shabbat now. I'd be standing in front of me, standing in front of a camera talking to myself all the time. So I, I forget how sometimes I'm in a room with other people. But my Lord, if you would be so kind. <laughs> Don't hear me out. If you would be so kind, sir. You'll be an honor to what I wrote about for the opportunity. We in the book of Leviticus. Chapter 6, verse 1, hallelujah. Hallelujah. And the Most High spoke unto Moshe, saying, Command Aharon and his son, saying, This is the law of the burnt offering. It is that which goeth up on his firewood upon the altar all night until the morning. And the fire of the altar shall be kept burning thereby. 
And the Kohen shall put on his linen garment, and his linen breeches shall he put on upon his flesh. Yes. And he shall take up the ashes whereto the fire hath consumed the burnt offering on the altar, <clears throat> and he shall put them beside the altar. And he shall put off his garments and put on other garments and carry forth the ashes without the camp into a clean place. So I, I just want to stop you to talk about this whole change that the priest has to do. I, I, I'm quite sure that they've talked to you concerning these, these offerings last week. Very uh, 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 um, uh, intensely. So I, I'm quite sure you understand how the burnt offerings, the sin offerings, and so forth work. So that's not where we're going to concentrate today. I want to talk about this right now. I want to talk about how the priest had to go in. He had to get fully dressed in all of his tunic and his robe and his and his his mitznefet, and he had to go in and he had to be fully dressed and he had to be clean and sharp and ready to go in to do one thing. And when he placed the stuff on the altar. Then he had to get out of those clothes and go get in other clean clothes and take the ashes away. What am I telling you? That the God of heaven and earth demands a respect that is not common. I just got through seeing a sister of mine, a um, young sister of mine. She had on a, a shirt and I told her the first time I saw that shirt, it, it made me weep. So, um... I will tell you all the shirt said, God is dope. And look, I, 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 I was born and raised in the hood. I know what dope means. I knew what it meant before y'all knew what it meant. Trust me what I tell you. It has morphed in its meanings. Dope went from meaning, for those of you who don't know, it meant from meaning marijuana to meaning other kinds of drugs. And then it morphed into this thing of, of the way you feel about something. Oh, that's dope. So now we have God is dope. And as a person, I, I, I don't want you to think I'm lashing out at nobody. I just want to... I just want you to hear this. Why would that make me cry? We have come to a place in our existence where we feel it all right to make God a part of our common expression. Mm. I want you to know that this God is not common at all. You can't make him common. You can't come before God any old way. I've listened to us. We've adapted uh, 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 systems of other people's trains of thought where we thought it was sounding wise. Just come to God any way you want. That means if you're first time coming, you're in the street. You don't know God, you come, I'm letting you in. I don't care what you look like. But after you get some understanding, your mind is supposed to know that you don't come before the master any way you want. You don't come before him shaking out your clothes, out trying to rub the wrinkle out. Go in your dirty clothes back and say, that's okay. I want you to know he's not coming. That's what that is. You go in 15 minutes, get fully dressed to perform this service before me. And then you go out and then you take off those clothes because when you come before me, I am God. Let's go. And the fire upon the altar shall be kept burning thereby it shall not go out and the Kohen shall kindle wood on it every morning and he shall lay the burnt offering in order upon it 
and shall make smoke thereon the fat of the peace offerings. Yes. Fire shall be kept burning upon the altar continually. It shall not go out. Don't you? And this is the law of the meal offering. The sons of Aharon shall offer it before the Most High in front of the altar. And he shall take up therefrom his handful of fine flour of the meal offering and of the oil thereof and of the frankincense which is upon the meal offering and shall make the memorial part thereof smoke upon the altar mm -hmm. for Reach Nehoach La Yehoah. Mm -hmm. And that which is left thereof shall Aharon and his sons eat. It shall be eaten with, without leavening in a holy place in the court of the ten of meat, and they shall eat it. Mm -hmm. It shall not be baked with leaven. Mm -hmm. I have given it as their portion of my offering made by fire. It is most holy as the sin offering and as the guilt offering. Yes. So this little meal offering, this little handful of flour, God said, this thing is important to me. Yeah. Hmm. It's important to me. I, 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 I give it to the priest as a perpetual due. That got to tell you something about how he felt about this little handful of flour. Because sometimes those of us who think that we have arrived at some place in our mind where we are great. We think that that means that we are more favored by God. God said that the meal offering, the flower, the least of it, I hold it sacred. Let me tell you the correlation. God said, listen, don't let the fatherless, mm -hmm. the widow, mm -hmm. you understand, mm -hmm. the needy mm -hmm. cry out to me because you, the ones I have provided for, mm -hmm. because you slacked your hand to give to make sure that your brother could eat. You slacked your hand because your brother was trying. And yes, maybe I had to let his land not grow this year because maybe he did something, but he still has to eat. And I made sure that you had food so that he could eat and you didn't want to give it to him. Don't make him cry to me. Right at the bottom. Chief of Chiefs should say, God is in the details of our lives. That great man said, right in the very detail of your life, it moves you to what it is that you're supposed to understand about the importance of your relationship with one another and your importance in the relationship between you and your God. I would tell you that humility is key. See, all the book of God is all intertwined, right? See, a lot of times we get confused because we try to look at the book of God like it's linear. This line here says this. This line says that. That line says that, right? And that is confusing sometimes because sometimes the line might be a little different on this page than it is on that page. And so now we're confused and we're having trepidations of hearts and, and all kinds of foolishness going on. But no, you don't have to do that. The Torah, the book of God is a, is a, a, a meshwork, a fabric that holds up everything, that, that holds you up, that binds you up, that the, the moray was talking about it earlier. Did you help the woman put, get the, the old lady get the thing off the shelf that she couldn't get? That's part of Torah. If you don't understand that it's all intertwined, if you don't understand that when the prophet said, listen, only thing that I require is that you love mercy, do justly, and what? Walk humbly before me. Then you gotta see what those components are. He said, love mercy. Why? Because you need mercy every day. You need mercy every day. You yourself need mercy. So if it is that you need the mercy, why won't you give it? Why won't you give it? Do justly, do the right thing. 
That's all that stuff that the Maury was telling you about. Them little things, do them. Them little details, them little simple little things that say, um, oh, open the door. Make sure that you see the you see the struggling woman. Why are you looking at her? Hold, go help her. And that last part is the part that trips us up all the time and walk humbly before our God. I need for you to know that means also walking humbly with each other. If you're not walking humbly with each other, let me tell you, you can't walk humbly before God. I need for you to know that that's, that that's an equation. You have to walk humbly with each other in order to walk humbly before God. And those who think they can just be humble before God and arrogant with men, you are mistaken. It's not the way it works. Let's go, my Lord. Verse 12. And the Most High spoke unto Moshe, saying, This is the offering of Aharon and his sons, which they shall offer unto the Most High on the day when he is anointed. Mm -hmm. The tenth part of an ephah of fine flour for a meal offering perpetually. Half of it in the morning and half thereof in the evening. On a girdle it shall be made with oil. When it is soaked, thou shalt bring it in. In broken pieces shalt thou offer the meal offering for a sweet savor unto Jehovah. Mm -hmm. And the anointed Kohen that shall be in his stead from among his sons shall offer it. It is a due forever. And it shall be wholly made to smoke unto the Yah. And every meal offering of the Kohen shall be wholly made to smoke. It shall not be eaten. So now every day they had to put up this meal offering and it could come in many different ways, but it always had to be unleavened bread. It could come on a griddle, like a, almost like a pancake. It could come like a, a dumpling. Y'all, so most of y'all are very much familiar with dumpling. I found that out. I found out that you could make a dumpling without yeast and it not be teeth. Um, um, what's the word I want to use? Offensive, right? It, 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 it's a way they do it, man. They roll it out and it's nice, and you put it in the pot. Yes, that's 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 unleavened bread. And then what you know is matzah. Yes, when you read about the the the, the showbread that goes before the Most High God, it's matzah. I want you to understand that as we're going into this season, know the part that matzah plays in our life all year long. You, it, it, this is not something that uh, we just get up or, or, or this is just the feast of matzah. But matzah happens in our life all year long. It's simple. It teaches a lesson. It will sustain you. You know, matzah will last for thousands of years. They found the excavation in a place called Elephantini or Elephantine, depending on how you want to pronounce it. And they found matzah. <laughs> Intact. Wasn't, I mean, I, I hope nobody ate it. But they were just looking at it. It wasn't moldy. It wasn't, it wasn't this. It wasn't that. It, it, it was matzah. I'm saying this to you for you to understand that the simplistic things of life, the thank you. You know, <clears throat> Allah, Shalom, Adon, Mori, uh, Mishael. Um, for those of you who don't know Mori, Mishael, um, <laughs> He could be a very hard man at times. Uh, did I say that okay, Cohen? <laughs> he could be a hard man at times. But if he loved you, he loved you. And he loved this people. And I remember one day we were sitting at the table and it, it almost sounded funny. I think I had sent one of my sons to do something. I said, go to such, such, such. And he waited for them to leave. And he said, I want you to call him back and say, please. Mm -hmm. Amen. And when he come back with it, I want you to say, thank you. 
Come here. Go get that, please. They looked at me like, what was that? I didn't grow up with a bunch of pleases with Marvel. I'm going to tell you that. Kohen no Marvel. I, I have a bunch of pleases. It was, I, I, I think my father may have called my actual name about six times in his whole life. Other than that, I was boy. And, and <clears throat> so, uh, you know, my, my point is that we have to teach the simplistic things in life so that we have good manners so that we are upright people, classy, dignified. God called us Yeshurun, upright one. Yes? We can't be regular, to use common vernacular. Regular is not for the people of God. Because, right back to my first statement, God's not common. If he's not common, nothing about him can be common. His people can't be common. His worship and his praise can't be common. <laughs> my nephew, uh, my nephew made this song that I'm, a, I, I'm absolutely addicted to. Y'all have probably heard it more times than me. Kavod, I just sit there and I listen to it and I just play it over and over. I got it on repeat. Keeps me sane. Yeah, very nice song. And I understand that one of his reasons to do it because um, sometimes we think just because we use the name of God and we want to give God an accolade, that it doesn't matter how. But there's a thing about reverence that goes beyond what you always see. Reverence is the reason why you couldn't run in the sanctuary. It's the reason why you couldn't bring food in the sanctuary. It was the reason, I'm talking about growing up, uh, the, you, you, there was these things you couldn't do. You couldn't talk loud in the sanctuary. I remember one day we were fixing, and I don't know how many of you have ever been to Benair Dot, but Benair Dot had a big, pretty big sanctuary. Yes, and <clears throat> we were on the east side, my cousin uh, Zakar and I, we were on the east side fixing the floor. And we needed some more nails and there were some more workers on the west balcony over on the other side. And um, we got them said, yo, we need some more nails. And we got called, not by our father, but we got called down to the office. And I never forget a dawn said, I know we're working, but it's still the sanctuary. Don't scream across the sanctuary. But it's not Shabbat, it's, it's Tuesday. It's the sanctuary. The name of God does not belong everywhere in your common mouth and in your common stuff, that's not the place for the name of the living God. Let me be clear. Cause some people say, well, that's your opinion. It's not my opinion. If you read this book, that's not my opinion. God has gone on record over and over and over and over again to say to separate the holy from the profane. To separate the holy from the common. That's what you see here. Why? Because all of these services, all of these ideals were things that made us deal with God, not in our commonality, but in, in, a, in, a, in a way that showed that we understood who he is. Let's read on, my Lord. 
We're in Leviticus chapter 6, verse 17. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And the Most High spoke unto Moshe, saying, Speak unto Aram and to his son, saying, This is the law of the sin offering. Mm -hmm. In the place where the burnt offering is killed, shall the sin offering be killed before the Most High. It is most holy. The Kohen that offered it for, for sin shall eat it. In a holy place shall it be eaten. In the court of the tent of meeting. Whatsoever shall touch the flesh thereof shall be holy. Yes. And when there is sprinkled of the blood thereof upon the garment, thou shalt wash that whereon it was sprinkled in a holy place. Mm -hmm. But the earthling vessel wherein it is sodden shall be broken. And if it be sodden in a brazen vessel, it shall be scored and rinsed in water. Every male among the Kohanim may eat thereof. It is most holy. Mm -hmm. And no sin offering whereof any of the blood is brought into the tent of meat and to make atonement in the holy place shall be eaten shall it shall be burnt with fire okay so they went to great lengths to distract you to tell you about this issue of most holy so i want to just deal with that just for a second in this whole idea of you know it said when the priest put on his garments that he shouldn't go out amongst the people in his garments that they that he not sanctify them by them now that would seem like a good thing right mm -hmm. he should just walk through with his garment and touch everybody and just sanctify everybody <laughs> sound like that would be the best thing in the world what god was saying listen you're living your regular life and you're doing things you, you're not clean most of the time, that's not our, our state. We have to prepare for that state. And God said, um, the problem is when you come in contact with something that I've hollowed and you're not right, it could cost you your life. I'm holy. That's not a word. That's a state of being. Separated, set aside, sanctified. That's me. And I never change. I never get unholy. I never get common. If you remember a few weeks ago, God told Moses, listen, I can't be with this people. I'm going to send somebody among you. But if I stay among these people, I will break out. Because I'm holy. You can't mix me with everything. I don't belong in all of your nonsense and in your mess. I am glorious. Different than all the rest. None to be compared with me. Much as you love your mother and your father, none to be compared with him. I love my wife. I love my husband. I love my children. None to be compared with him. This is the place he wants you to see. With all of these rituals and all of these uh, varying things that we had to do, it was about setting him aside. Amen. Let's go, my Lord, please. And this is the law of the guilt offering. It is most holy. Mm. In a place where they kill the burnt offering, shall they kill the guilt offering. Yes, sir. And the blood thereof shall be dashed against the altar round about. And he shall offer of it all the fat thereof, the fat tail, and the fat that covereth the inwards, and the two kidneys, and the fat that is on them, which is by the loins, and the lobe of the liver, and he shall take away, and he shall take away by the kidneys. And the Kohen shall make them smoke upon the offer, and the Kohen shall make them smoke upon the altar for an offering made by fire unto the Most High. It is a guilt offering. Mm -hmm. Every male among the Kohanim may eat thereof. 
it, sh it shall be eaten in a holy place. It is most holy. As in the sin offering, so is the guilt offering. There is one law for them. The Kohen that maketh atonement, atonement therewith, he shall have it. And the Kohen that offereth any man's burnt offering, even the Kohen shall have to himself the skin of the burnt offering which he hath offered. Mm -hmm. And every meal offering that is baked in the oven, and that is dressed in the in the stewing pot, mm -hmm. in stewing pan, slika, and on the girdle, the griddle, slika, shall be the Kohen's that offereth it. And every meal offering mingled with oil or dry shall all the sons of Aharon have, one as well as other. Yeah. Another. Toshi. And this is the law of the sacrifice of peace offering, which one may offer unto the Most High. If he offer it for thanksgiving, then he shall offer it with the sacrifice of thanksgiving, unleavened cakes mingled with oil, mm. and unleavened wafers spread with oil, and cakes mingled with oil mm -hmm. of fine flour soap. Yes. With cakes of leavened bread, he shall present his offering with the sacrifice of his peace offering for a thanksgiving. Yes. And of it, he shall present one out of each offering for a gift unto Yah. It shall be the Kohanes that dash the blood of the peace offering against the altar. And the flesh of the sacrifice of his peace offering for thanksgiving shall be eaten on, eaten on the day of his offering. He shall not leave it any of it until the morning. Yes. So now I just want to stop real quick to say this. The, the guilt offering, you know, was slightly different from the sin offering. You knew you were guilty. It was something that you had done deliberately. It had happened and there you, 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 made, you messed up in something in the holy things or you might have taken something that you should not have accessed and God gives you a way to bring that guilt offering with that ram, that very expensive ram, in order to say, if you notice that one, there was no diminution of, of what you can bring. The guilt offering, you, you had to get the ram. However you had to get it, if you had to put yourself in servitude to get that ram, you needed to get that ram. There was no bring up the turtle dove on the guilt offering, right? right? So now I, I want you to, 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 to know, but now we're talking about peace offerings, Shall I be? Shall I be? right? Now these peace offerings come in two different categories. Right. There's the Thanksgiving one, that if you have the Thanksgiving offering and you offer it, you can eat the flesh of that Thanksgiving offering that day. Right. Next day, it's no good. What, did it spoil? No, God says no good. And it has to be offered with unleavened bread. That's right. Now, sidebar, please forgive me, Cohen. When I say sidebar, I, I tell you this, this next part of this offering, and I, and I always try to correlate these two scenarios. The next part of this offering is about a vow, right? And the, you're going to hear the, uh, the, the, our brother read it, but it, what it says is that if, you, if the offering, the peace offering was for a vow, you got two days to eat it. Mm. Why? Because he said so. Mm. You know, a lot of times we, 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 try to, we try to break our head open to try to figure out certain things. And there's this word in Hebrew called medubar. You know what it means? That's just the way it is. Medubar. It's just, this is the way. This is the thing, right? When God gives you these commands, I want to tell you because uh, there are... I've had this question, and so I decided to answer it now, Cohen, because people have been questioning me because they say, well, you know, some people do this, some people do that, and I'm not here to, in any wise, disparage what anyone does. Um, I pray that the Most High God would give us all good sense to figure it out together and love one another and work it all out. People have asked, um, well, why would you still eat lamb on Passover? Because in the book, it calls it an offering, a zevach. And we can't do offerings in these days and times, so we should not have that lamb. 
I just want to say to you, I want you to think about what Passover is. As we approach this season, Passover is a very personal time between God and his people. He said, no, no stranger can come. This ain't time to invite your friends from, you know, Philistia to come hang out. That's this is not your time to get the, the, you know, the people from Ty to come and chill with you. This, this Passover, this is a very personal time. Let me tell you what makes this time so personal. I killed that you might live. Now, let me explain. I took life. A lot of times, well, I've heard us, we go, well, let me just see some Egyptians. No, that's not the way God feels about it. Get that out your mind. I need for you, all you Israelites to take a little deep breath and get down off whatever horse or whatever pedestal you think you belong on. Because I need for you to recognize that God is the God over all the earth and the yeah. Egyptians belong to him too. And I want you to know because he killed the Egyptians, it made Passover such a special occasion for us. Not only, listen, the law of redemption of the firstborn has nothing to do with anything that happened to Israelites. You know that is owed to those Egyptians that died. God said, because in that day, when I did it, I took all the firstborn to be mine. Because I killed them, I took all the firstborn to be mine. Therefore, you must redeem your sons. The animals that are firstborn that can hit the altar, they can't live. The ones that aren't clean to go on the altar, you have to redeem them or what? Break their neck. Because I killed that you might live. This is that time, me and you, personal. So in the book of God, they called that lamb a sacrifice. It was a sacrifice, but it was a sacrifice in that moment that he had empowered every Israelite to do. Regardless of tribe, every household killed their lamb themselves even though it was called the Zevach. The Kohen is here, ask him later, even when I'm gone, I'm, I'm quite sure he'll tell you, he's right here, he'll tell you. And the last part of it is, not one piece of it went on an altar. Did you hear me? Roast it by fire, eat it, and in the morning, drop it down into the fire and let it burn all up. Yes? So this is why we recognize that that particular Zevach, and I'm saying that to, sh to show here, in a peace offering, right? If it's this kind of peace offering, you can eat it for one day. The meat didn't spoil. If it's this kind of peace offering, you can eat it for two days. Because God said so. In the same vein, just because he called it an offering, he still told you what to do. Different things, as God speaks it, he gives it different assignments and he doesn't ask anybody if you like what I'm doing. Show me that in the book of God. Well, do y'all do y'all agree? I tell people this, I don't like the word covenant. I don't like the word covenant because it implies that there's an agreement between two or more parties. I, I want you to know that um, this is more like, um, <laughs> this is more like, uh, I'm going to make you an offer that you can't refuse. Right? Because even when God calls us to say amen, right? Curse be that could that move his lame and landmark, and all the people shall say, Amen. And curse be he that, that curses his mother and father, and all the people shall say, Amen. Right? And then when it gets down to the end, all you slickies say, Well, I, I, I didn't agree. So I'm good. God said, Curse be he that did not confirm 
all the words of the law. And the people shall say, Amen. Right? It's all together. God didn't make a mistake. It's us who think that we are wiser than the one who made the brain. I need for you to think about that. You think with this gray matter that is a brain that if a blood vessel bursts up in it, you, you got a problem. But you think that your brain can outthink the master of the universe. How is that? We go on. We go on. But if the sacrifice of his offering be a vow or a free will offering, it shall be eaten on the day that he offered yes. his, his sacrifice and on the morrow that which remaineth of it may be eaten. But that which remaineth of the flesh of the sacrifice on the third day shall be burnt with fire. Yes, sir. And if any of the flesh of the sacrifice of his peace offering be at all eaten on the third day, it shall not be accepted. Neither shall it be imputed unto him that offereth it. Mm -hmm. It shall be an abhorred thing. <laughs> and the soul that eateth of it shall bear his iniquity. Yes, sir. And the flesh that toucheth any unclean thing shall not be eaten. And it shall be burnt with fire. And as for the flesh, everyone that is clean may eat thereof. Mm -hmm. But the soul that eateth of the flesh of the sacrifice of peace offerings that pertain unto the Most High, having his uncleanness upon him, that soul shall be cut off from his people. Come she. And when any one shall touch any unclean thing, whether it be the uncleanness of a man or the or an unclean beast or an unclean detestable thing, and eat of the flesh of the sacrifice of peace offering, which pertaineth unto the most high, that soul shall be cut off from his people. Yes, sir. Tom she. And the most high spoke unto Moshe, saying, Speak unto the children of Israel, saying, Ye shall eat no fat of <laughs> ox or sheep uh -huh. or goat. Uh -huh. And the fat of that which dieth of itself. And the fat of that which is torn of beast yes. may be used for the, uh, any other service, but ye shall not in no wise eat of it. So now this is just, cause, look, before these people, there's, you know what there's no word for in the Torah? Cholesterol. <laughs> right? Ain't no word for cholesterol in the Torah. But the God of heaven and earth, Blessed be his name. Amen. He said, even of the animals that I give you to eat, there's certain parts don't touch. Not that it's unclean for you to touch it, but you can't consume it. That hard fat by the rump. See, if you've never opened one of these animals, y'all have no idea what I'm talking about. But let me help you. There's, uh, there's this stuff in, in the animal on his back. Uh, toward his rump, it's called call or, 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 or there's another name for it. Tallow, toda. That's that word, tallow. They season things with it. They melt it and they season things with it and y'all go, ooh, Lord. Because it said beef. So people say beef, that's good. But tallow is unclean to eat. See? Even in the clean animal. God said, don't eat that. That is the stuff that's going on the altar. Along with the lobe of the kidney and the, and, and the liver. That's going up on the altar. After you open an animal and you take out every all of the stomach... All of that stuff stays on the spinal column. And if, if the, the, the client can tell you, you can grab the, the trachea and just pull it. It all comes right off. Mm. All attached. Mm. Mm. Perfect system. Now the animal is there for the priest to eat, for the, the, the whoever to eat, depending on what kind of offering that it is. Yes? So God said, don't eat the fat. God also tells you don't eat the blood. Hmm, right. right. Right? Right. 
Today they got recipes. You add a little blood. They had recipes for stuff called blood sausage. It's not a euphemism. It don't mean because it's red. It mean because they take the blood of the animal, mix it up with some spices and some vegetables, do some stuff, put it in a case, wrap it up and cook it. And when blood cooks, it gets hard and they cook it and they eat it and they go, mm -mm, delicious. God said, don't eat none of that. Right, right. And there ain't no word for cholesterol or high blood pressure or diabetes in the book of God. But he knew about how your systems work before you got here because he made them. See, that's the one. Come on, my Lord. Let's, 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 let's get through this. Let's get through this. For whosoever eateth the fat of the beast of which men present an offering made by fire unto the Most High, even the soul that eateth it shall be cut off from his people. Hmm. And ye shall eat no manner of blood, whether it be of fowl or of beast, in any of your dwellings. Whosoever it be that eateth any blood, that soul shall be cut off from his people. Because the blood is the life. That's right. Everything that's about you is in your blood. If you're sick, it's in your blood. God said, mm -mm. I, I, I use blood to clean stuff in the animal. I use blood to carry stuff as a transport system. Don't eat that. I'm telling you, I made it. It's not good. Trust me. Oh, yeah, yeah, come on. Come on. And the Most High spoke unto Moshe, saying, Speak unto the children of Israel, saying, he that offereth his sacrifice of peace offering unto the Most High shall bring his offering into the into Yah out of his sacrifice of peace offering. Yes, his own hand shall bring the offering of the Most High made by fire. The fat with the beast shall he bring, that the beast may be waved for a wave offering before Yah. And the Kohen shall make the fat smoke upon the altar, but the beast shall be Aharom's and his sons. And the right thigh shall he give unto the Kohen for a heave offering out of your sacrifices of peace offerings. He among the sons of Aharon that offered the blood of the peace offering and the fat shall have the right thigh for, his, for a portion. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We're in the book of Leviticus, the sixth chapter, the 33rd verse. He, seventh the seventh chapter, the 33rd verse, Torah Rabbah. He among the sons of Aharon that offereth the blood of the peace offering and the fat shall have the right thigh for a portion. For the breast of, wa of waving and the thigh of heaving have I taken of the children of Israel out of their sacrifices of peace offerings and have given them unto Aaron the Kohen and unto his sons as a due forever from the children of Israel. This is the consecrated portion of Aaron and the consecrated portion of his sons out of the offerings of Yah made by fire in the day when, when they have presented to minister unto the Most High in the Kohen's office, which the Most High commanded to be given them of the children of Israel. In the day that they were anointed, it is a due forever throughout their generations. This is the law of the burnt offering, of the meal offering, and the sin offering, and of the guilt offering, and of the consecration offering, and of the sacrifice of peace offerings, which Yah commanded Moshe in Mount Sinai, in the day that he commanded the children of Israel to present their offerings unto Yah in the wilderness of Sinai. Amen. This last chapter that we we're about to go into is how the priests were anointed and consecrated. And so as we're going into it, the f a couple of things off, off the top of the line. You're going to find Moshe ben Amram in this capacity as the servant of God. He functioned as the priest. 
Was he the priest? No. He was the priest maker. Amen. Right? Because he had stood in the very presence of the living God. Amen. His whole essence was different. Remember, he had to put veils on his face when he spoke to people. I listen to people say, oh, that disappeared. I don't know if it disappeared. It never said it disappeared. I don't know if it disappeared. What I know is that he stood in the presence of the living God for 40 days and for 40 nights. And for that, he was the servant of the living God. He didn't eat or drink in God says he was sustained purely off the glory of God. Now you dig that one. So here he comes now to make the priest to the most high God. Eighth chapter of this book and it reads on this wise. And the Most High spoke unto Moshe, saying, Take Aharon and his sons with him, and the garments, and the anointed oil, and the bullock of the sin offering, and the two rams, and the basket of unleavened bread. And assemble thou all the congregation at the door of the tent of meeting. And Moshe did as Yah commanded him. And the congregation was assembled at the door of the tent of meeting. And Moshe said unto the congregation, this is the thing which y'all have commanded to be done. Okay, so now I'm about to, I just want to say what the thoughts that I'm about to say are my own. They do not necessarily represent um, the leadership of Hashab or Yisrael or, or, or the Kohen. This, I like to give disclaimers in case people want to be mad. You can just be mad at me. Amen. See what happened? He said, gather the whole congregation and come out and see this thing. This wasn't done in secret and in private. This was so that the whole congregation knew and it was going to be glorious because it was supposed to be a thing of establishing the servant of God in the presence of the living God in the sight of the people. So I, I, the reason why I had to say that is because nowadays uh, we walk around and next thing you know, this one is this and this one is the great one and that one is the king and the priest and the rabbi and the this. When did this happen? In some, uh, who did that? In the, when did that happen? How did it happen? And I have to talk this way because sometimes people are, we don't recognize that we're fraughting our own progress by doing these things. Now, people may look at me and go, well, who are you to talk? Listen, um, listen, anybody want to check my resume, come talk to me. But that's not the point. What I want to tell you now is that, see, we was there when his father uh, consecrated Amen. and Amen. made him Amen. a priest. Amen. I don't care what y'all, how, what anybody... I stood there and I watched the priest right. make him a priest. I was there. He put his hand on him. Y'all, right. whatever else he put his hand on him. Right. Hear me? In the sight of the people. That's important. We jump around here and we think everybody run around saluting and, and we got all kinds of signs and wonders because everybody got a title and everybody got a position and everybody got, and no, and we not going nowhere. Because when you line up the leaders and you look behind, there ain't no followers. Again. Don't call Saharon. Don't call the Kohen. You can call me directly because I said it. It is important that we stop be acting silly. You want to stand before this people get trained. This is not a matter of I got in the spirit of God. Get trained. Be taught. Be able to say who your teacher is. So that the people can judge who it is that they're going to put their lot, their lives in there. You recognize when you stand there with this priest that you put your life in his hand? He's guiding you in the way of the living God. Amen. You think that's a light matter? You think it's just him standing up here on this podium running off at the mouth? He's thinking about it when you're not there. 
in the privacy of his own house. Ask his children about how he sit and in, the, in his mind and, and the things that happen because you're contemplating this, the phone ringing, you're getting counsel, you're, you're, you're doing all of these things quietly because you don't want to tell nobody, but then you want to turn around and what? I'm, I'm a big guy. I'm in charge. I'm, I'm. Stop. We're confused. And we're running in all different directions with a bunch of confusion. I'm going to get off of that because that's not what it is. But I just wanted to tell you because this priest was made in the sight of the people. Do you understand me? He was consecrated by the man of God in the sight of the people. To know that this is where his position was supposed to be. Let's go. And Moshe brought Aharon and his sons and washed them with water. Yes, sir. And he put on upon them the tunic and girded them with the girdle and clothed them with the robe and put the ephod upon him. And he girded him with the skillfully woven band of the ephod mm -hmm. and bound it unto him therewith. And he placed the breastplate upon him. Hallelujah. And in the breastplate, he put the urim and the tumi. Lights and perfections. Tumshi. And he set the mitre upon his head. And upon the mitre in front did he set the golden plate, the holy crown, as Jehovah commanded Moshe. And Moshe took the anointed oil and anointed the tabernacle and all that was therein and sanctified them. And he sprinkled thereof upon the altar seven times and anointed the altar and all his vessels and the labor and his base to sanctify them. And he poured of the anointed oil upon Aharon's head and anointed him to sanctify him. Mm -hmm. And Moshe brought Aharon's sons and clothed them with tunics, and girded them with girdles, and bound head tires upon them, as Jehovah commanded Moshe. And the bullock of the sin offering was brought, and Aaron and his sons laid their hands upon the head of the bullock of the sin offering. Mm -hmm. And when it was slain, Moshe took the blood and put it upon the horns of the altar round about with his finger, and purified the altar. And poured out the remainder of the blood at the base of the altar and sanctified it to make atonement for it. And he took all the fat that was upon the inwards and the lobe of the liver and the two kidneys and their fat. And Moshe made it smoke upon the altar. Mm -hmm. But the bullock and his skin and his flesh and his dung were burnt with fire without the camp as Jah commanded Moshe. Some sheep. And the ram of the burnt offering was presented. And Aharon and his sons laid their hands upon the head of the ram. And when it was killed, Moshe dashed the blood against the altar round about. And when the ram was cut into his pieces, Moshe made the head and the pieces and the suet smoke. And when the inwards and the legs were washed with water, Moshe made the whole ram smoke upon the altar. It was a burnt offering for Reach Nechoah. It is an offering made by fire unto Jehovah, as Jah commanded Moshe. And the other ram was presented, the ram of consecration. And our Roman his sons laid their hands upon the head of the ram. And when it was slain, Moshe took of the blood thereof and put it upon the tip of Aharon's right ear mm -hmm. and upon the thumb of his right hand and upon the great toe of his right foot. So they are now ordaining, consecrating yeah. this priest. Yeah. I want you to see the transition. It said it was presented and when it was slain, he took the blood. I want you to know that's basically the way all these offerings were made. But the thing is, I want you to know whoever was making the offering had to slay the animal. Let me be clear. It wasn't the priest's job to slay the animal. It was the priest's job to put the animal up on the altar. If you did the sin, you did the slaying. Now, that went for men, women, 
Why is that important? See, if you've never been in that place where you've had to take the life of an animal, you don't get it. You don't get it. It's words on a paper. But let me tell you, when you take that blade and you put it to the throat of that animal that was alive and vain, and if you know anything about a goat, I know why God, I, I, let me not use it that way. I, it makes sense to me why God picked the goat for the sin offering. They cry. They shed tears. I'm not just talking about a sound. They know. You look that thing, you looking at this animal that's alive, knowing that you're about to take its life and, and your life is just as fragile. God is going to allow you to take that life instead of your own. Bryce! Did you hear me? When you feel that warm blood on your hand and you watch the life go out of that animal, it is supposed to induce you to have remorse. These offerings are done the same way. Those consecration offerings, all the offerings, those young priests and Aharon had to kill that animal. That wasn't Moshe's job. I'm just telling you all who think you are out in your city life and oh yes, who didn't send my offering. You ain't sending nothing. You had to bring your offering and you had to kill your offering. Come on, Cohen, let's go. And Aharon's sons were brought. And Moshe put of the blood upon the tip of their right ear. Yes. And upon the thumb of their right hand. And upon the great toe of their right foot. So this may seem strange. Why well, I'm putting stuff on people's ears, people's hands, and people's feet. That's the, what's that? The concept of hear this word of God. Amen. O ye priest, I'm consecrating your ear. That you will always hear the word of God. I'm going to consecrate your hands that are forever supposed to be doing the work of God. I'm going to consecrate your feet that you always walk after God. This is your job now. And he's consecrated them all. Who read in the book of God where he said, I make you a nation of priests unto me. You think you got a different job? <laughs> People look at Leviticus and go, that's for the priest. You better read it again. That's for you. The priests are out. Those priests, those priests, those are our priests. But you are priests to the whole world. And you're supposed to function in that same way consecrated to God, hearing, doing, and walking in this law to show it forth that the people would gravitate to you and see how they could get a piece of that gold. Amen. Amen. Let's finish this, my Lord. Verse 25. And he took the fat and the fat tail and all the fat that was upon the inwards and the lobe of the liver and the two kidneys and their fat and the right thigh. And out of the basket of unleavened bread there were, that was before Yah, he took one unleavened cake and one cake of oil bread and one wafer and placed them on the fat and upon the right thigh. And he put the whole upon the hands of Aharon and upon the hands of his sons and waved them for a wave offering before the Most High. Mm -hmm. And Moshe took them from off their hands and made them smoke on the altar upon the burnt offering. They were a consecration offering for a sweet savor. It is an offering made by fire unto Yah. And Moshe took the breast and waved it for a wave offering before the Creator. It was Moshe's portion of the ram of consecration as Yah commanded Moshe. I want you to stop there because I need for you to hear this, all you Israelites. Moshe had to eat a piece of that in order to complete the service. I don't know whether y'all want to hear that or not, because nowadays we're trying to figure out how to be full vegetarians, full vegans, all that's nice, that's beautiful. Be that all the rest of the time of year. 
when God commands that you do something, you don't get to tell God it's not good for you. Because God made your body. You didn't make him. See? So I need for you to hear that as a part of the ritual of getting him consecrated, Moshe had to eat a piece of that meat in order for the consecration to be done. It is the same way with the sin offering. The priest that does it has to partake of it. It is a fulfillment of what it is. The same goes for Passover. For everybody who says, well, I don't eat meat all that. That's all right. Get your little piece, put it in your mouth. It's not about your eating choice. This is about the word of God. Stop trying to figure it out. I, well, if, uh, 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 and you know, we don't really have this. So if I don't do this, do, I'm, I'm going to tell you like, <laughs> do what you want to do. Go ahead. Just do it. Because we all smarter than God. Have fun. Hmm. Yeah, that's about right. That's my I was been saying. Okay, let's go. <laughs> let's go, my lord. Let's finish this out. And Moshe took the anointed oil, and of the blood which was upon the altar, and sprinkled it upon Aharon and upon his garments and upon his sons and upon his son's garments with him, and sanctified Aharon and his garments and his sons and his son's garments with him. And Moshe said unto Aharon and to his sons, Boil the flesh at the door of the tent of meeting, and there eat it, and the bread that is in the basket of consecration, as I commanded, saying, Aharon and his sons shall eat, eat it. And that which remained of the flesh and of the bread shall ye burn with fire. And ye shall not go out from the door of the tent of meeting seven days. Until the days of your consecration be fulfilled. For he shall consecrate you seven days. As hath been done this day. So Yehoah have commanded to do. To make atonement for you. And at the door of the tent of meeting shall ye abide day and night. Mm -hmm. Seven days. That's right. And keep the charge of Yah. That ye die not. For so I, for so I am commanded. And Aharon and his sons did all the things which Yah commanded by the hand of Moshe. Hallelujah. 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 See how he said it, that you die not. I, I'm doing this stuff to prevent your death because I'm holy. I bless the name of the living God for those I thank uh, Don Saw Aharon yes. and the Kohen for having us today. For all of you, I give thanks to the Most High God. We bless the name of the Creator. Because he is good and he is worthy. He's worthy. Who's okay? Because eight. He's worthy in all times. None like him. And we give him all praise, all honor, and all glory. I thank you for allowing us to be here today. As you know, um, uh, for those who are watching on the Benea Dot channel, we will open up again at 7 p.m. for our services this evening. Um, I pray that the Most High God would bless each and every one of us as we approach this season of holiness in all of the ways and the times that we are observing it. I pray that the God of heaven and earth, blessed be his name, that he would accept us, that he would even show us, teach us, so that we can be better tomorrow than we were today. We bless the name of the living God. Hallelujah. Shabbat Shalom. <laughs> Complete your circle. Hallelujah. 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 Give him another round of applause, Koda Rabbi, for teaching the Sidra today. For having, having him, we thank the Most High for allowing him to get here safely, along with his family.
And I pray that the Most High would be with you. Told out for them powerful words today. And may they resonate in our minds throughout the day, throughout the week, throughout the month, throughout the year. Hallelujah. Amen. At this time, we're going to now uh, dismiss. I will say the words of the blessing found in Numbers, the sixth chapter, the 24th verse, hoping and praying that the Holy One of Israel truly will bless each and every one of us. We also want to thank the Most High for allowing even Mori Dawi to be in our presence this day. Hallelujah. <laughs> Told out for his safe arrival. Uh, another veteran in the house of Israel, been around a long time. Told out Yah for your life and told out Yah for allowing you to be here. Hallelujah. Yivarek ka Yehoa wa Yishmarecha. Yair Yehoa panayo alecha we chunecha. Yisa Yehoa panayo alecha we yasim lecha shalom. Yehoa bless thee and keep thee. Yehoa cause his face to shine upon thee and be gracious unto thee. Yehovah lift up his countenance upon thee, and may he give thee peace. Hallelujah! Yahweh! Selah. Shabbat shalom, Lakim. Shabbat shalom to our family online, uh, those of you that are on our Zoom regularly, and also B'nai Dot Kobe Israel, Torah for tuning in. We're going to resume our service at 4.45 this afternoon. 4.45 this afternoon. Todah Rabbah. Hallelujah. 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 Oh, praise be to Yah Yisrael. Spared our lives to bring us to this point in the Shabbat day. It's been a blessing and a powerful day so far. So many great messages that have gone forth, many things to inspire the soul continue to elevate our root coat as we prepare for Pesach and Kagmat so coming in. So what better to sing right now than of thy wondrous works will tell. Amen. Found on the 17th page in our Sidurim and will also be shared as well for those of our family online so that you can sing along with us. The heavens declare it, the glory is thine. The earth and its beauty shows honor divine. Our Yah, the Creator of everything, to Thee we lift up our voices. Mercies we see, thou send if thine angels to show us the way to thee. We send out our praises when we pray, sing of the mind of Yah, Yah.
the might of Yah, Yah, oh my God. He's not Yah, the Yah of Israel. He may give darkness light. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Kokavo le Elohe Avraham Yitzkakwa Yisrael. Bore Hashemaim wa Aret. Bore Ko Basarbam. Hevetanu Lazman Haze. Le Halel Oteka. La Avod Oteka. Lishmo et Torateka. Anat nu semakim la amo le faneka Yehoah ha Elohim. Bavakwasha tamid le hiyot itanu ko hayom haze. Tamid la azoro tanu le hakim et rukotenu. Bish bil kag pesa kag matzot. Le kago le faneka Yehoah Elohim. Ki anat nu ohevim le halel o teka le ola. Al Yehoah bavakwasha bavakwasha ta azor na otanu la alot et rukotenu. La alot et na shotenu. La alot et kol gufenu. Le halel lo teka. Ya Yisrael. Ata Elohim. Ain old we ain et leka. Ata malkenu we go alenu. Ata hadzur shilanu. Rakata ne halel. Yeho Elohim bavakushak. To me. Continue to be with us for all this day. Continue to lead us and guide us. Help us, Yah, so that we may even strengthen our root coat, strengthen our souls, and allow ourselves to even individually become closer unto thee. Nah, Yah, allow us to even remove from our root coat even all of the comments that we have even removed from our houses. May you, Yah, allow us to even reflect upon the many wonders that you did in the land of Mitzrayim in the days of our ancestors. It is unto you, thee, Yah, that we are in the lands of our captivity once again, and we ask and we beseech your favor. We beseech even your kindness once again, that you may even continually allow us to be prepared to go forth from this land. We see of the many plagues that you were doing in the earth, Yah, even as you did in the land of Mitzrayim. Even at this point, since we are in the four corners, you are judging the four corners. And it is unto thee, Yah, that we seek to bring all four corners to serve you. May you use us, Yah, as your administrators, even as you has made the breach with our ancestors. Bavakwasha, continually put your special ruach upon each of the 12 tribes of Yisrael. Allow humility to be within our midst once again. Allow love to be within our midst once again. Allow us to even have the greatest blessing of all, shalom. Once again, in our lives, and our minds, within all of our relationships, allow us to have peace between husband and wife. Allow us to have peace between parents and children. Allow us to have peace as even siblings, one amongst another. Friends, Yah, allow us all to have peace once again and allow us to even operate with one another in good faith, putting kindness forth first and then allowing you, Yah, to be the judge of all matters. We are thankful unto thee, Yah, for this day, for the breath of our lives, for each breath in which we take and every, every word which we utter. We give all praise unto thee, Yah, for you give us all of these things, blessing us even with the clothes on our backs. Blessing us, Yah, with the food that we have partaken of, even on this lunch. And may you, Yah, even remember those that have went without a meal this day. May you even hear their special petitions. And even as they seek thy help, may you continually be with all of the souls on this earth. Even all of the animals that you have created, even all of the plants that you have created. For all of us need thee, Yah, and all of the many kukwim that you have put within the heavens. It is unto thee that we give all thanks and praise. May you put a special rock upon us throughout the remainder of this day, Yah even as we seek to do your will, now and forevermore. Oh. Hallelujah. 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 Kaya. 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 Selah. O Shema Yisrael, Yahuwah. Eloheinu Yahuwah Eka O Baruch Shem Kevot Ma'akuto le'olam Ma'akuto le'olam Ma'akuto 
le ola mo baru shemke ko na puso le ola de ola wa e o shema israel ya ho wa elo he no ya ho wa elo he no ya ho wa elo he no o shema israel ya ho wa elo he no elo he no ya ho wa e ka Hallelujah. Kaya. At this time, as we move into our psalm service, if you all may please be seated. As we will ask four people um, within our midst, really three of them today, coming from our family that is serving with us online, and then one within our midst here. As we go through our four psalms for the day, even Psalm 79, Psalms 121, Psalms 124, and Psalms 148. For those that uh, will be called on the Zoom call, you will be um, asked to unmute your mic, and then you will lead us in the psalm today that you have been chosen for. So for our first psalm, Psalm 79, if we can even welcome our brother that is with us online, even Achmelech Ben Dan. Hallelujah. Shavi, yeah, yeah. Motor, if you, you can help him out, Motor. Kane. Shabbat Shalom. Shabbat Shalom, Laka. Shana Tova. Shana Tova, Laka. Thanking Yah for life. Thanking Yah for his, his mercies. It's certainly a blessing to be able to speak to. Israel, even in this manner. I thank him for each and every one of your lives. I thank him for the many blessings that he has bestowed upon us, even in these times. Hallelujah. And again, as I said, it's certainly a blessing to be asked to read a psalm, Psalm 79. A psalm of, of Asaph. O oh, Yah, the heathen are come into thy inheritance. They have defiled thy holy temple. They have made Jerusalem into heaps. They have given the dead bodies of thy servants to be food unto the fowls of the heaven, the flesh of thy holy ones unto the beasts of the earth. They have shed their blood like water round about Jerusalem with none to bury them. We are become a taunt to our neighbors, a scorn and derision to them that are around us are about us, Sika. How long, O Jehovah, will thou be angry forever? How long will thy jealousy burn like fire? Pour out thy wrath upon the nations that know thee not, and upon the kings that call not upon thy name. For they have devoured Yaakov and laid waste his habitation. Remember not against us the iniquities of our forefathers. Let thy compassion speedily come to meet us, for we are brought very low. Help us, O Jehovah, O power of salvation, for the sake of the glory of thy name, and deliver us and forgive our sins for thy name's sake. Wherefore should the nation say, Where is their power? Let the avenging of thy servant's blood that is, that is shed be made known among the nations in our sight. Let the growing of the prisoner come before thee. According to the greatness of thy power, set free those that are appointed to death. And render unto our neighbors sevenfold into their bosom their reproach. Wherewith they have reproached thee, O Yah. So we that are thy people and the flock of thy pasture will give thanks, will give thee thanks forever. We will tell of thy praises to all generations. 
Hallelujah. Once again, Shabbat Shalom. Shabbat Shalom. Certainly a blessing, as I said, even in these times. My praise as we even go into this new year, the season, we ask the Creator to continue to spare our lives that He has done. I ask Him for wisdom, knowledge, and understanding of even dealing with His plague that He has placed among us on this earth. Once again, thanking him for the life of my family and I, and even the whole Israel. With that, I say Shabbat Shalom. Shabbat Shalom Leka, hallelujah. <laughs> Told our Rabbi brother for those words, and may Yah even accept your petition and the things that we all seek from the Creator as we draw close unto him, especially during this time. If we could all please welcome for the 121st Psalm, even I quote Danya Eshet Naftali. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. <laughs> Shabbat Shalom. Shabbat Shalom, Locke. Uh, first and foremost, given the Most High, uh, all praise due to his name, um, I'm going to read Psalm 121. Hallelujah. I will lift up mine eyes unto the mountains, from whence shall my help come. My help cometh from Yehoah, who made heaven and earth. He will not suffer thy foot to be moved. He that keepeth thee will not slumber. Behold, he that keepeth Israel doth neither slumber nor sleep. Jehovah is thy keeper. Jehovah is thy shade upon thy right hand. The sun shall not smite thee by day, nor the moon by night. Jehovah shall keep thee from all evil. He shall keep thy soul. Jehovah shall guard, guard thy going out and thy coming in from this time forth and forever. Um, <clears throat> I love that psalm um, because... I'm thankful that the Most High gave me knowledge of him or that my parents <laughs> taught me um, this way and that I know him and that I know where my help comes from um, and that the Most High doesn't slumber nor sleep and always keeps us where, wherever we're going, wherever we are. He protects us. He heals us. He provides. And I'm truly thankful to know who he is. Um, I'm thankful to, to the Most High for Shabbat, for the ability to rest. Everybody knows that Pesach prep is a lot of work. Um, we're cleaning and doing all kinds of things. And I'm just thankful that the Most High gives us this day to really just slow down and to take time to remember who he is and give him praise. Um, I'm praying for all those that are mourning, all those that are sick. I pray that the Most High will heal us all. Um, I'm praying that everybody has a blessed and meaningful, meaningful Pesach season, a Pesach Kagmato week. Um, and I hope that it's really meaningful and not just for the memorial part of it. Um, you work so hard to clean your homes, but I hope we all find something to do to clean our spirits in this new year um, and start afresh and, and start new. Um, think about something you wanna leave behind or free yourself from the same way we left Egypt. Find something that, um, I don't know, it might be holding you back or something. It could be small, it could be big, something toxic. It could be a relationship, it could be fear. Um, anything that's holding you back or find something that um, you want to move yourself forward, whether that's learning Hebrew or doing something that you want to accomplish. And I pray that you find that one thing and that you really work on it this year um, and make a, an effort every single day to do that. So once again, to our family for this opportunity. I love you all. Shalom. Shalom. Shabbat shalom. Hallelujah. <laughs> Definitely many wise words of wisdom she shared with us. And I hope that it resonated with you all especially as we prepare our root coke for this special season. So told off for those great reminders. At this time, if we could all please welcome for the 124th Psalm, Gavir Teshua Bat Yisrael. Hallelujah. Shabbat Shalom, everyone. Shabbat Shalom, Locke. Being the 124th Psalm, I'd like to say, um, to that Yehovah for my life and all those that are present today and all honor, glory, and praises are due to his name. 124th song, a song of accent of David. If it had not been Yehovah who was for us, let Israel now say, if it had not been Yehovah who was for us when men rose up against us, 
Then they had swallowed us up alive, and when their wrath was kindled against us, then the waters have overwhelmed us, the stream have gone over our soul. Then the proud waters have gone over our soul. Blessed be Jehovah, who have not given us as a prey to their teeth. Our soul is escaped as a bird out of the snare of the fowlers. The snare is broken and we are escaped. Our help is in the name of Jehovah, who made heaven and earth. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I like to say, Tola Jehovah. I, I mean, I can't even, I can't even say or even begin to even, to, to give the words to thank the creator for my life for the things that he had brought me through I've been through so much between the year of 2019 and then this year but the most high have brought me through so much and I just say, I just want to thank him for the love that he had for me. I've just went through surgery and anybody knows when you lay down, before they put you to sleep, you don't know if you're going to wake up. Mm. You don't know if anything is going to go wrong, all you could do is just call out to the most high and ask him to save you, ask him to guide the doctor's hand. But he has brought me through, through many surgeries. Hallelujah. Through many, many illnesses. And I just like to, like to give all honor and all praises to him. And just like Donya said, this year, during Pesach, I mean, last year, I, I, I know it was bad for all of us, but the Most High still brought us through. That it shouldn't be nothing that we would look forward to than the cleaning up our spirits. Trying to make an effort to do better than last year. And to have a goal towards something. I like to say, Toad I Yehovah for allowing my son to make it to Africa on his trip. And I pray that he's safe there and that he will, bring, or that the Most High will bring him back home safely. Oh, yeah. And all for all those babies who was born through this pandemic. I said, tell out your whole for bringing them through. Hallelujah. All those that didn't make it, I pray to the creator that they will leave their memory here with the, with the people who know them, the people who love them, and that, that all those who are mourning them, that their mourning will be Sure, and the most how will comfort and heal them. All honor and glory is doing to thee and him alone. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. <laughs> Told our Yah for the gift of life and definitely thankful that Yah has preserved you through your many trials and tribulations, Gaveret. And may Yah continually be with all of us throughout the course of this year as he was with us last year and really since this my gift for this plague has touched upon the earth. There's been a lot of shaking and moving in everybody's individual lives, and we just are thankful unto Yah for him preserving us individually and collectively through them all. Hallelujah. At this time, if we could all please welcome, and I don't see him in here, but if you hear the mic in the hallway, brother, uh, for 148, if we could all welcome Achna Aman ben Asher ben Yisrael to lead us. Shabbat Shalom. Shabbat Shalom, Lika. First, I'm going to give all glory and honor to the creator of heaven and earth. 
saying to all y'all for everybody here this day, those at home, praying the most high bless everyone. Have a wonderful and Shabbat day. Uh, 148th Psalm. <clears throat> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise ye the creator from the heavens. Praise him from the heights. Praise, Praise him all his angels. Praise, Praise ye him all his hosts. <laughs> Praise ye him sun and moon. Praise him all ye stars of light. Praise him, ye heavens of heavens, and ye waters that are above the heavens. Let them praise the name of the Creator, for he commanded, and they were created. He hath also established them forever and ever. He hath made a decree which shall not be transgressed. Praise the Creator from the earth, ye sea monsters and all deeps. Fire and hail, snow and vapor, stormy wind fulfilling his word. Mountain and all hills, fruitful trees and all cedars. Beasts and all cattle, creeping things and winged fowl. Kings of the earth, all peoples, princes, and all judges of the earth. Both young men and maidens, old men and children. Let them praise the name of the Creator. Hallelujah. For his name alone is exalted. His glory is above the earth and heaven. And he hath lifted up a horn for his people, a praise for all his holy ones, even for the children of Israel, a people near unto him. Hallelujah. First, I want to say, um, Todayah for, let me look this way. Yeah, yeah. I'll just give glory on to the creator for my life and life everyone here uh, as we prepare for another Kagmaso um, Passover I'll just give glory on to the most highly blessed to be blessed to see another holy a holy season uh, it's uh, never um, a life food thing for me to be blessed to see another any type of holy season uh, to acknowledge that we are definitely not promised from year to year to see another holy season. Uh, so when uh, we come around to whatever those holy season is, Yom Kippur, Haksuko, wherever it is, and uh, blessed to see it, I uh, just give glory and honor to the Creator Amen. to be alive to um, witness those things. Uh, for me, it's uh, definitely uh, meaningful, a lot more meaningful than when I first came in. You know, I was. Um, kind of joking the job when I first came in, uh, didn't know much, but uh, as the Creator has blessed me to open my mind um, with the wisdom and knowledge and understanding of Him and those law statutes and commandments and to have great people that I've been around for so long in this community, it's a blessing. And then to turn around to have um, two children, to have my children who was um, born in law, a son and a daughter, oh, yeah. is uh, definitely a lot more meaningful to me and uh, you know, seeing them and uh, watching them go do it from you know being born in it and uh, me not being born in laws, it's definitely a blessing. Uh, with everything that's going on, I pray the Creator be with everybody, individuals, collectively. Uh, like everyone says, those who mourn and lost ones uh, from the pandemic or whatever may happen to their loved to the loved ones they lost, may the Most High can, um, comfort them. Through these lost um, through these through these times and help them to get through it. Um, for those who have may got sick, may the Homosai continue healing them. Uh, just pray that everything, whether it's holy season coming in, just as like Danya and everybody's been speaking about, that we are constantly making changes for the better. That uh, we don't go into this new year the same way we came in with the past, the following, the one that came before this one that we actually making changes in our lives for the better. Each each one of us know what the changes we have to make with each other in our lives. I mean, um, not nobody knows what you know. The Creator knows and you know. So I pray whatever it is that we may want to change, that we most high bless us to change it for the better. And uh, we continue moving forward to glorify and praise his name. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. for your words and just giving us those good reminders. May Yah continually bless you and your household and be with all the families of the houses of Israel. At this time, if we could all please stand as we sing a few praises unto Yah Yisrael before we move into latter parts of our afternoon. You know, the beauty of the Shabbat day is, you know, as uh, I think it was a code Danya mentioned that, you know, when we're going through the week, we're cleaning up, we're getting ready for this season. And even if it's not in this season, we're still working six days a week and we look forward to the safe haven that the Shabbat day brings us. So what better than to bless the day of the Shabbat? Amen. 
found on page 90 in our song books. Blessed be the day of the Shabbat. Blessed be the joy that it brings. Blessed be the Yah of our fathers who gives us everything. Blessed be the joy in the worship, the things that enlighten our lives. Blessed be the Yah of our fathers, for he is the most high, and Yahuwah is his name. Blessed be the day of the Shabbat. Blessed be the joy that it brings. Blessed be the Yah of our Father, who gives us everything. Blessed be the joy and the worship, the things that enlighten our lives. Blessed be the Yah of our Father, for He is the Most High, and Yahuwah is His name. Yes, Yahuwah is His name. Blessed be the day of the Shabbat. Blessed be the joy that it brings. Blessed be the Yah of our fathers, who gives us everything. Blessed be the joy in the worship, the things that enlighten our lives. Blessed be the Yah of our fathers, for He is the Most High, and Yahuwah is His name. Yes, Yahuwah is His name. Yes, Yahuwah is His name. Blessed be the day of the Shabbat. Blessed be the joy that it brings. Blessed be the Yah of our Father, who gives us everything. Blessed be the joy in the worship, the things that enlighten our lives. Blessed be the Yah of our Father, for He is the Most High, and Yahuwah is His name. Yes, Yahuwah is His name. Blessed be the day of the Shabbat, blessed be the joy that it brings. Blessed be the Yah of our Father, who gives us everything. Blessed be the joy in the worship, the things that enlighten our lives. Blessed be the Yah of our fathers, for He is the Most High, and Yahuwah is His name, and Yahuwah is His name. Yes, Yahuwah is His name. Help Israel, Yahuwah. Help Israel, Yahuwah. Help Israel, Yahuwah. Eh, Yahuwah. Eh, Yahuwah. Be vakusha, Yahuwah. Be vakusha, Yahuwah. Be vakusha, Yahuwah. Eh, Yahuwah. Hey, Yahuwah, it's been too long, Yahuwah, it's been too long, Yahuwah, it's been too long, Yahuwah, hey, Yahuwah, hey, Yahuwah, let not the heathens defeat us, let not the Gentiles defeat us, let your love shine for it's so divine. Come now, our Father and leader. I say, ah, 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 Break it down, break it down. 
ataque. Thank you. 
आगे Praise be to Yah Yisrael. It's good to break a sweat for a great cause, giving praise to a holy power. At this time, while we are all still standing, if we could all please welcome even the Saw of the Ba'it, Saw Haron Ben Levi to lead us in our afternoon segment. Hallelujah! 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 Shabbat shalom, family. Please be seated, brothers and sisters in the room. Giving all praises, honor, and glory to the creator of heaven and earth. Thanking him for my life. I'm going to turn off this sound here. And the lives of all of you at home. Uh, pray that you all are well. And we thank you for your presence here in spirit. So I'm just up here to give the drummers a break. <laughs> uh, today was a good day for them. Sometimes they uh, get a little out of sorts, but today was a very good day for them. I want to thank them and congratulate them on um, their service, their style of worship and service to the Creator. So uh, I'm thankful that we've gotten this far, that uh, the holy season is upon us. Some of our family are actually celebrating tonight, Pesach, and this community will be celebrating tomorrow night. It's all good. Our creator hopefully is accepting all of our works and all of our efforts. So I'm not going to be up all afternoon. Today is going to be a light day for me. and. I hope that we can uh, cover some ground, though. I'd like to 
start off with a question and answer period. Anyone can ask a question, anyone can answer a question. We only ask in any event of a controversy that the final decision will rest um, in my position. So I'm up here, not because I know more, the gentleman that helped me out know more, but because we want to maintain order on Holy Shabbat day. We request that the family online participate with us by putting their questions in the chat. Of course, we um, will focus on uh, the Holy Season, Pesach, and Kagmatso, and anything that was covered today by the esteemed Rabbi Baruch, who was here with us earlier today. So the question and answer period is now open. And while we're waiting for the questions, I just want to say to all of our elders that are not here that we miss you. We have an elder older than me here today. I'm very happy to say uh, that I'm not the eldest in the building. Uh, so we have Moray Dawid here from South Carolina. So we're thankful for his presence. And we missed our court A. Hopefully he will be back soon. And all of our other elders, especially our mothers who are not here, we miss you. We look forward to seeing you in the back of the room uh, to spend your Shabbat with us. I don't know when we're going to get back to normalcy, but I hope and pray that this is not what the rest of my life is going to look like. And I hope and pray that the Creator will lighten his hand on the world uh, and his hand on uh, this family. I continue to pray for the uh, the sick amongst us, thanking Most High for all those who have recovered, those who are recovering, thanking Him and praying for the those who are mourning. We're still losing family. Uh, people are uh, making transition, but I want to constantly remind you that this is the cycle of life, and we have new life coming in all the time, and we're thankful for the birth of all of our new borns uh, that are coming into the nation. And so uh, we don't know who's the Moshe and who's the Dawid amongst us, but I hope and pray that the Creator will continue to deliver into our nation uh, people who are going to, souls who are going to exalt His name and to serve His nation and uh, the highest courts of His glory that He'll see that these, these souls will be worthy of uh, calling themselves is Yisrael. So the question and answer period is now open. Do we have any questions? Are they coming in? Okay, great. Shalom family, what you got for me? Okay, and I can, you want me to read it or you go read it? No, you go ahead and read it. All right, this is the, uh, this uh, question is coming in from Sister Quatifa Yisrael. What are some of the foods to stay away from during the Feast of Unleavened Bread? Good question. And I'm sure my family out here will help me with the things that I forget. The first thing I would suggest to you, which was going to cut out a lot of stuff, is processed foods. If you cut out processed foods and stick to fresh foods, uh, you'll be on the right track. Uh, of course, anything that rises has leaven in it. You will cut out anything that has or that has vinegar, wine, or any of those kinds of products, you would cut out. Um, Again, if you cut out processed foods, which is going to be cheeses and uh, cakes and uh, sandwich meat, things of that nature, you cut all of that stuff out, you stick with fresh vegetables, you stick with fresh fruit. Um, of course, you can have chicken, fish, but don't have it that's processed. So you want a regular chicken, cut up chicken or fish, uh, you know, no canned foods. Um, things of that nature. If you cut, that's all processed foods. If you cut all of that out and stick to a, what you might think is a bland diet or as a you know simple diet, you cannot go wrong. It's for seven days. It will help to clean out your system. It will, it, it will thicken your blood, uh, uh, not thicken your blood. It will actually thin out your blood. 
it will um, serve you well. And um, there'll be a change. You know, you'll feel a change in your body, but it's a positive one. And I believe that the creator was very, very wise in how he had us set up these different holy seasons in the beginning of the um, spring season and at the beginning of the fall season, going into the winter, we would have a, we have a, a fast and then a change of the body when you go through that fast. So there's different things that the body goes through that we don't even consider uh, when we take these, when we take these times out to observe the holy seasons of the most high. So um, I think that um, that's pretty much it. And anyone else that has anything they'd like to add, please raise your hands. Tora. I see the uh, Korah Naomi in the back. I'll take her hand first, and then we will take her Ima next. Just pass your Ima to Mike when you're done. Shabbat Shalom. Shabbat Shalom, Lot. Um. Um. When I went to Walmart the other day, I saw that there was a cake mix that was kosher for Passover. Um. <laughs> How is it kosher for Passover when it's cake? I can't answer that question because I don't know what was in it. Uh, you need to read the ingredients, but if it doesn't rise, um, I don't see how you can call it a cake. So um, again, these are still processed foods. You, that's the kind of stuff you do not want to buy. Even um, when you buy your flour for, for your matzo, you don't use the same flour that you had in the house. Uh, that's You want to try to use organic flour and you want to use whole wheat flour. Um, stone ground is really, uh, to me, is a little more natural um, if you can get stone ground. But if not, the other flour is good as long as it's kosher and uh, it doesn't have anything else in it. Okay, so you want to really be careful when you buy products that have other ingredients in it that you can't even identify. That's a problem. And that's why you want to stay away from processed foods because um, that has, they have all of that. I, I used, listen, everybody that knows me knows I love cake. Uh, it's my thing, you know. I give up alcohol for cake, okay. If I can't have two vices, I'll take that one. And I used to read the box label, the, the labels on these cakes, and there were so many ingredients I couldn't read. So what did I do? I started making my own cakes from scratch. I don't know if that's a good thing uh, because oh, it's right there at the house. Good. It's a good thing because I give it all away, at least most of it away. And the brothers and the sisters here can't wait. So, um, you know, but what I'm saying to you is the more we can get back to the natural ingredients of the things that we eat, I think the better off we'll be because we don't know what's in all this food. No, you can't make everything you want from scratch, but the things that you like that you want to be able to explore and during COVID, everybody's been in the kitchen baking. I mean, I don't think I'm the only one that's been doing that. So just, you know, keep it fresh, keep it simple, and, um, and your body will be the better for it. Amen? Okay, we'll take the Iman next. Akot Leah, Eshet Mishare Yaakov. Shabbat Shalom. Um, something else that we look for is we go through all of our seasonings as well in your cabinet because, right. like, you might not even realize it, but it'll have like yeast or, you know, hydrolyzed yeast or MSG. So we try to take out all of our seasonings that have a bunch of ingredients. But my question um, was um, chocolate. So we know that our community traditionally stays away, away from chocolate, but Naomi asked um, the other day, she was like, well, can we have cocoa powder? Because the ingredient is just cocoa. So that was what my question was. Okay, I don't, I don't actually know what's in uh, cocoa. If it's just cocoa or if there's something else mixed in there that you're gonna have to read the label. Uh, you know, we should read the label for everything we shop for. I'm seriously, you got to read the label, especially during Cogmatso. I mean, during uh, the regular season, you may have, um, you know, you want to read the label for different things that's in there because they have so many different names for pork. Um, you know, uh, I remember when we used to, when I was in New York, you know, we come from a party at night. We went straight to White Castle to get those murder burgers. All right. And, you know, it took me years to figure out. It was years and years and years ago when I was a teenager. And come to find out, the bread that, that 
uh, White Castle burgers are made with has uh, yeah L sixteen in it, which is like dead people's hair. Yeah, why? Where did they get that from? But it's in there. Look it up. And so there's a lot of other bread. So th these things, again, we just grab them off the shelf. We have to really, really pay attention to what we're buying. And, and um, you know, I don't care how long you've been eating it and how much you like it. It's just the food that you can replace with so many other things, uh, so many other foods. So just really be careful about what it is you're eating. Now, as far as chocolate goes, I don't, chocolate is processed. So that right there tells me that's something that I would take out of my diet for the seven days. But I don't know about cocoa, and you really need to see what else is in there and what the process is that they're doing to make it. There's certain sugar, the domino sugar. You be careful with domino sugar. If it doesn't say kosher on the domino sugar, they actually grind the sugar down with bones of pork bones. That's the process of grinding down domino sugar. So if it doesn't have the kosher sign on it, then it's probably the other process that, where they use um, bones from pigs. There's all these little things you just, who thinks to look at whether the sugar is kosher? Well, you need to do that. And so um, this is just a time of light and lightning and waking, awakening to just open up your mind to think about what it is you're purchasing and the products that you're bringing into your home. Okay, Mishare and uh, Yaakov, you may speak, please. Um, a, <clears throat> a couple of people pointed out um, uh, that, a couple of sisters pointed out that uh, cocoa is made with fermentation um, the same thing is going to happen with certain kinds of tea, a brewed tea versus an herbal tea. I, I forgot the difference, but it's something to just look at. Now you have Google, you can just quickly, easily see. It's tea, it's natural, but to get it from a plant that's on a tree to something you want to drink, or again, a berry of a cocoa plant to something that you would want to taste, they have to do something to it. That something usually is fermentation. Same thing with a bit of yeast and grape juice turns sugar into alcohol, which is what makes alcohol and which makes wine or anything else that has alcohol. So that's the key thing. When we think of unleavened bread, that English translation makes you think on a simple level, just don't eat bread. This is all you know, extraneous stuff. Hamates is to ferment. So yeast ferments, leavening ferments, and then there's other sorts of things that are synthetic fermentation processes, like for brewing a tea, hence the term brew, like you do for a beer. So that's just the things to look out for when you're looking at those ingredients on an advanced level. So if you're new to this, just try to do the best you can. But those of us who've been doing it, you know, that's what we need to look at, too. I just want to remind you, cut out soda. You shouldn't have soda. You should need, I mean, some people, soda, we don't, soda, we don't bring soda in. Every now and then, somebody might need a chaser. <laughs> That's about it. <laughs> so, I mean, doing Cogmatso, lemonade, you know, make your own aids, whatever you want, limeade, lime lemonade, you know, things like that. Be careful with the teas. Again, uh, keep it simple, um, you know, and, and stick with the fruit juices, things of that nature. Uh, it's just for a week. And, uh, you know, uh, you know, you might you might get a little bored with it for a week, but y'all to say it's a commandment. The commandment alone should make us all not want to whine and complain about what it is we have, we're, we're doing and uh, the sacrifices that we're making. It's it's for life. We're sacrificing for a blessing, and so uh, it should not be a burden in order to keep this this holy season. Okay, Cohen, you have a comment you want to make? You can get grab. Okay, go ahead. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's fine. Okay, and Shabbat Shalom Lakim. Um, the uh, Kolea pointed out about the seasonings as well. Now, some people might uh, go the extra mile and purchase new seasoning during this time of Kogmatso. Um, but the other thing is, if you use the seasons that you were using all year round, if they're good for uh, Kogmatso, what I try to do is I just take a rag or something and just wipe them off, wipe them down, because you're using it all year round. Your hands touching it, you don't know, flour. remember, flour, different flour your hands was in all year round. So try to clean the season if you're going to use it for Kogmatso. So, so I would do that. Too. Good point. It's just about giving glory to the creator, you know, best we can in captivity. 
You know, it's, it's amazing. I remember growing up, and I, I see the hands. When we were growing up, living in the projects in Brooklyn, uh, my mother, we had to do spring cleaning every year. I mean, we weren't keeping cog mock soap, but we had to do spring cleaning. And my mother did not play. We had to clean everything. She'd tear the house apart, and we'd have to wash the walls. We had to wash the windows. She put new, cur new curtains up. Um, you know, she just went all out to make sure that the house had a new fresh smell. And, and then I think about all of the elders that did that in uh, the South, that they did that. And th honestly, they may have thought they lost the knowledge of the Most High's law, but they didn't. They were doing it in the, in the actions and the traditions that they carried on. And so um, it's a blessing when you think back, and I'm sure so many of you are online and the older ones remember all of these different things that they now call spring cleaning. We were just getting ready for Pesach. And um, it's, it's just a beautiful thing to be able to make the connection now and, 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 and the blessing of knowing that um, the traditions of Israel, of the ancient Israelites are still being, um, you know, continued even in this day and time, even without the knowledge. It's, it's amazing. Kane, anyone else have a question? You want to go to the line? Kane, I see a hand over there. I'm going to get you next. And I see a hand in the back. The yellow dean will get your questions next. Tora. Senator, this question coming from online is coming from a coat Yael. Uh, please speak on how long one should keep prepared food around. For example, you make fresh strawberry preserves for breakfast. How long before it is set or? Okay, um, what we what we do in my house, and I think what the tradition has been in, in the Israelite community is we set a kind of a rule for, let's say if you cook food, because I don't know the preserves, are how, um, how much uh, effort that takes. Um, but um, anytime we say during Kagma, so we want to make sure that we eat fresh every day. So if you cook something, um, it's fresh. We consider fresh. And again, we all may have different rules or guidelines that we follow, but the community guideline is that you um, eat it within 24 hours. That way it's not given, hasn't been given the chance to spoil, to sour, to ferment and things of that nature. Um, I'm not sure the process for the for the um, for the fruit and 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 the preserves, but uh, if you can get a, a day or two out of it, maybe before it starts uh, starts fermenting, I think you're okay. I wouldn't make a whole lot at a time because then you're gonna you don't want it to spoil. You don't want you don't want it to start fermenting, and you don't want to throw it away. So we try not to cook more food than we can eat within a 24 hour period. And so that's, that, that's the basic rule that we suggest that you follow. And that way, hopefully we're getting the favor of the creator in the sense that we are doing what we think he would expect us to do. If we were in our land, we wouldn't have refrigerators. And I mean, I'm talking about in ancient days, we didn't have a lot of things that uh, we could use now in order to, so we just kind of, we don't have to necessarily act like they did or treat everything like we did then, but we want to keep the same mentality of the fact that we want to eat fresh every day. And that's part of, I think, the process of keeping this holy season. And because you don't have preservatives in the things that you're making, again, um, you know, that's going to speed up the fermenting and the, and the spoiling process. Okay. I mean, some people don't even like to buy orange juice. They'll squeeze the orange juice, oranges for the for the week, you know? I mean, some people take it that far. Everybody has their level of, you know, what they want to do for a particular food that they eat in order to try to give, give the glory to the creator. It's all about giving the glory to the most high and trying to be as close to uh, perfection as we all can be in everything that we do. Okay, so I'm going to take... Um, Eliyahu's hand, and then I didn't see, I didn't miss you in the back, Tikwa. I'll get you next, okay? And you're going to have to come forward in a few minutes so you can get to the mic, okay? So you come up and be ready to come after him, okay? Toda. Shabbat Shalom. Shabbat Shalom. Our, our marshmallows kosher for Passover. I need you to lower, lower your mask so we can hear you. Our seat. marshmallows kosher, kosher for Passover. Marshmallows? No. He said marsh, marshmallows? No, marshmallows. Marshmallows are mostly not kosher unless you get them from 
uh, you know, from a from a kosher place. Um, they, so they're hard to find. I wouldn't buy them in a grocery store. You got to go to a halal store, grocery store, or to a kosher grocery store. And then, um, but I wouldn't eat them doing kagmatsu because again, it's processed. There's a lot of different uh, processes it goes through before it's going to be a marshmallow. Okay, marshmallows don't grow on trees. <laughs> okay? All right. Shabbat shalom. My, Shabbat shalom. My question is, what type of juices and what type of teas can we drink? Good question, Tikwa. Um, juices, I would stick to the simple juices again, um, but you got to read the labels to see if you can figure it out now. It's so much easier to know what to eat and what not to eat because you have the internet. You can call up a company and they'll explain to you how they process their food. I mean, that, that I mean, it's just that simple, you know? Um, so I would say apple juice all week long, <laughs> orange juice, and be careful because that juice sometimes is pasteurized. I don't know what that process is. If it's more than a filtering process, you might want to know what they do. Um, Grape juice is usually pretty safe, I believe. And, home, and, and, and and you can squeeze any fruit or you can, if you have a food process or juicer, you can make everything fresh from the juice, from the, from, the, from the fruit. And so you can have prune juice, you can have plum juice, you can have, some people laughing at prune juice. Some people need prune juice. Don't be going, let me talking about them prune juice now. Some, some of them elders need that prune juice. <laughs> Everybody's laughing about prune juice. I mean, I don't, I don't drink prune juice, but hey, you know. All right, all right. Let's get it back together here. Let's get it back. Let's get it back. But um, yeah, I would say um, some people invest in juicers and 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 just have it for kagmatsu. You can have juicers just for kagmatsu. Um, so think about that. Um, we have a tradition here where we make uh, homemade ice cream during Kagmaso because that's like the only dessert that we can have. And um, so uh, we got so used to it in my house that my Isha got a, a special, well, we have a Kagmaso uh, ice cream maker. And now we have, we just got ourselves a regular uh, rest of the year ice cream maker. And so we don't even buy ice cream anymore. It's, it's, it's delicious. No, it you do every, it does everything automatically. I mean, it, these new ice cream makers, we used to have to churn it. You don't have to churn it anymore. It churns itself. You just and then you don't even have to put ice in there anymore. You freeze the the thing that it goes in. You freeze that in advance, and then she just uses milk and whatever she uses. No, heavy. I think it's heavy cream, and some milk, and and um, sugar. And what's the last thing I was gonna say? Heavy cream, milk, sugar, and vanilla flavor. And she used makes almond ice cream. And so we have with almonds in it, we have with butter pecan. We eat all of that stuff. So, you know, it's like, uh, can't you tell? I've been gaining weight like crazy. So I try to stay away from it, but it's kind of hard to stay away from homemade ice cream. But these are the things that you can do, make the investment and it'll last for years and um, kagmatsu can be a time where you have traditions and it, it can be celebratory because you're doing all of these great things for your family and, um, and, and your children will remember it forever. You, you know, it's, this is a great time. Kamani, is that a hand? Okay, let's hear from you. And uh, yeah, we got Tikwa ready and we got him, um, so we're good. Shabbat shalom. My question is from the portion today um, towards the end, chapter eight, uh, the last few verses where the Kohanim were being consecrated. Um, and they had to stay inside the um, tabernacle for seven days. So my question for Kohen or somebody else that can answer, I'm just curious. Uh, it doesn't really say, uh, we never hear about any kind of living quarters at the tabernacle. So I'm just curious about you know, where they were for these seven days, where they, did they build like a temporary shelter inside the walls of the tabernacle? Like what, where were they for those seven days? 
I'm going to take a call. Shabbat Shalom, Lakim. Good question. I can only assume that uh, they didn't dwell in the sanctuary proper where you had the menorah and all of the holy vessels. So what I would imagine is that the courtyard, they would have some sort of temporary dwelling that they would stay in there and just stay within the courtyard near the tabernacle near the labor of base and all, and then, then offering the, uh, the altar of burnt offering. So they would stay in that, you know, in that area, and they would have a temporary dwelling, and they could still wash and do things like that. So that's what I would think, but not in the tabernacle itself. Makes sense. Did you notice that they're, uh, and, and they had to, and they had to go outside the, the, the quarters eventually because there's no outhouse in that in that area hello anybody think about that so you know they had to use the shamush and different things of that nature so they you know they they use common sense and obviously the most high had his rules and what have you and so we would be fine i see something online um Kaber sharon says um uh, take notice of some toothbrushes toothpastes i would suggest everybody use a fresh toothbrush for kagmatsu okay change your toothbrush out certain toothpastes deodorants, denture cleaners, and other health and beauty products. Now, we are more focused in, in this community on what you intake. Now, some of these things do go into your body, so you got to really be careful. But some of these items are hard to find, but you can probably find the natural ingredients. Some people in the community sell the natural ingredients that you can use in order to... Um, you know, try to do your best because everybody's on a different level of how far they want to go in order to keep these um, this holy season. And so um, the best you can do, do the best you can and in every area that you can and, and you will feel better for it. And, and hopefully the creator will bless you for your extra efforts. And so don't um, think that there's something you cannot do. And whatever you do, don't complain about inconvenience because the creator can make life so much harder for you and you won't even want to use the word inconvenience. It will be so much worse. Okay, so that. Cohen, did you, were you trying to you say know, something? I, I was trying to make another point on what the money was just asked. Something just came to me. Oh. Mike, man. Okay, I just wanted to make one quick point, case in point. Remember Nadab and Abihu, they were slain during those seven days of consecration. They offered strange fire, so that means that they were around that area, around a burnt offering, getting drunk, getting high, and so they were doing things that they weren't supposed to be doing. So that just tells me that they, that's where they were, just roaming around in the courtyard, inside the courtyard, rather, playing with strange fire, drinking, you know what I mean? And that's what happened. So I definitely uh, would say that they were in temporary dwellings. 24-7, they say the idle mind is what? Yeah, they got kind of bored and they started doing some things that they, I guess, in their off time. Yep. And listen, you know, uh, the creator had to remind them. Well, he reminded everybody else because it was too late for them. Um, I don't, they didn't see what hit them as far as I'm concerned. And so, um, you know, we really have to uh, be careful how we serve this God because he can be very, very uh, merciful and he can be very, very awful. And that's his glory. Okay. Uh, somebody else? Okay. Is that a hand in the back behind you? Okay. All right. Well, well let's take the one online first, and then we'll come back to it. So there, this question's coming from Akmel Kiel. Can we use vegetarian substitutes like Beyond Meat or any other brands? I'm asking for my vegan and vegetarian family. I would say no. I think that that, again, is processed food. You got to see what the process is, what's in it. Um, you know, I know it's coming from a plant base, but you really need to know what else is in there. Uh, it's very important that you know what else is in uh, the processing. So no, I think the vegetarians know, and I think they've gotten used to the fact that they have to stick with grains. They have to stick with... Uh, with the nuts and fruits and vegetables and things like that, potatoes. Potatoes is a big filler. After after Kogmatso, most of us don't want to see a potato. I know I'm not looking forward to seeing a potato after Kogmatso because you eat it for lunch, for breakfast, lunch, and dinner because it's filling. You know, it's the one of the most filling things that you can eat. 
And uh, most times, I talked last week about eating too many meals a day. Doing kagmatsu, you're going to probably eat more than three meals a day because the food is uh, goes right through you. And I don't mean to sound gross, but anyway, uh, you know, it doesn't stick with you very long. It's, uh, you know, that's the kind of food you're eating. So all of these things, you, you get it. And, you know, I remember when Cohen Levy, uh, he told the story at least, what, four million times maybe? Yeah. <laughs> that when he first came into law, all he ate was bananas and matzahs for seven days. He didn't know what to eat, so he ate bananas and matzahs. And if you've never heard him speak, you don't know this story. But if you've heard him speak, you, you've probably heard that story. Tom she. Okay, so uh, we're going to take the brother in the back. Yeah. And Shabbat Shalom. This question is along those lines. Um, I was actually watching Shema online. I know it's probably more of a controversial question. Um, I just want to know if you can possibly give me a little bit of clarity of beans and rice and the aspect of why some Israelites eat it and most don't. Well, everybody has their own. Okay, well, uh, some people believe that rice uh, rises um, r and beans rise. That's been some people's um, thought on it. Now we actually, I don't know if they were able to do it because I didn't follow through. Um, and I believe I have the paperwork here somewhere. Um, yeah, the research that we did on that. Um, beans, uh, most beans, if they're not dry beans, if you say fresh beans, I don't, do not believe that the legumes, they are okay um, to eat as long as, because they don't rise. If you don't have them dry and you're sitting them in water and that kind of stuff, they should be fine. Uh, rice, we stay away from rice because it's usually processed and, uh, and because you add water and it rises and then maybe that's not the same thing. Again, we don't bring it into property. But um, that research may say that it's okay. I'm not sure. I don't have it in front of me. Um, it's, okay. it's okay. That's what I thought. So people uh, can eat it. Um, you know, we've done the research and we found that there is no saor process going on. There's no fermentation going on with it. Again, these types of items, again, I would suggest to you that you make them for one day and do not let it go past the 24-hour period because then you're going into a different um, realm of, keeping uh, the Feast of Unleavened Bread, okay? So that might be the reason why you may not want to do it past the day. Okay, I'll take your hand, yes. All right, this question's coming from Olivia F. Is heavy cream kosher for Passover? Good question, I believe that it is, um, but uh, now you're making me wonder. But as far as I know, it is kosher. Um, they just kind of churn it. I don't think there's a lot of things added to it if you look at the ingredients. Um, so check it out. I do believe Maisha has done that research, so. Okay. Anything else? That's That's it then, right? Okay, great. We thank the family for participating online. You help us uh, keep us sharp, the family that are here. And, uh, okay, Colin? Oh, I was okay. I was just saying, can you remind the people here and online when we begin our Passover, when our first day is? And Hallelujah. Okay. Blessed day. Shabbat shalom uh, to all of you that are online. So we will begin our Passover uh, tomorrow evening and then the uh, Yehoah's Passover tomorrow evening <laughs> and the first day of the Feast of Unleavened Bread we will be observing on Monday. That will be our first day of the Feast of Unleavened Bread. And then we'll keep you posted with all of the other days. Of course, we have the Shabbat Ben Yamin. Uh, Kodashim, and then uh, as I said, we'll keep you posted with uh, uh, the uh, seventh day. Um, we will have a double Shabbat uh, next week, but we'll give you all of that because I don't want to bombard you because then people start to forget certain things. So on Yom, the first day of Feast of Unleavened Bread, we'll remind everyone 
about the Shabbat. You have to prepare for the Shabbat Binyamin and also for the um, first day of the feast, a uh, seventh day of the Feast of Unleavened Bread. So we'll give you all of that information as the day approaches. But we will begin tomorrow evening. Again, I will be uh, having service from my home. The Zoom link will go out tomorrow for all of you who want to tune in. And then we will be here for the first day of the Feast of Unleavened Bread, uh, regular Zoom link. And then we'll take the services and have one service. Com we'll combine two services into one. And then we'll finish about three, and everyone will go home to feast. All right? So, but I'll remind you again. Torah Rupa. Torah Cohen. Uh, just wanted to clarify that, again, I did mention about the rice and beans. We don't eat it uh, in this community. We don't bring it on the property. And that's that's been our rule for a while. Um, can't tell you what to do in your own homes, but traditionally we don't. Uh, we put that aside, the beans and the rice. But again, we're not telling you that it's not kosher. Now, um, I did want to mention, Cohen, I don't think you did, that on Shane E, for the people who are in the Charlotte area, we will be having a, um, well, we'll have a service here, but it'll be very, very light because we do not want to overcrowd the building. Uh, we suggest you come out for the, for the um, fellowship gathering. We're going to be having a fellowship gathering outdoors hopefully the weather permitting, um, and uh, bring all your own supplies, your own food, everything that you need, because you will not be uh, allowed in the building for more than just restroom purposes or to go in the kitchen to wash something off or something of that nature. But try to bring everything that you need, bring stuff to clean your stuff up and do what you need, take everything home and clean it. And just come out and let's fellowship. We want families to be at separate tables uh, mask wearing will be required, even though you're outdoors. If you're going to be congregating and speaking and talking with one another, hugging, doing things of that nature, everyone should keep their masks on. And, um, you know, let's, let's, and have hand sanitizer at your table, bring everything that you need so that everybody can stay safe. Okay. That's very important. It'll be, um, it'll run from three o'clock until I believe seven o'clock. And it'll end, and that'll give everyone enough time to get home, get the children ready for school, and every, anything else that you may need to do. So by 7 o'clock, we should have everything cleaned up, the area cleaned up. If you're coming out, don't come out at 5 if you know we're starting at 3. Okay, try to get your food ready. Be out here in a timely manner so that you can have time to fellowship. And we're Because we're going to shut down. If you come in at 6.30, we're still shutting down at 7. So please try to come out at a decent time so that everybody can enjoy each other's company and you have time to eat and relax and do what it is you want to do so that um, we can do something towards the um, ability to fellowship and, and enjoy each other's company. Okay? Toto Rabah. Toda Cohen. Um, okay, we're going to move on. There's a couple of things I have for um, what's going on. I don't have a whole lot. I'm sorry? What was that? I didn't hear you. Oh, Kananio, what's going on? Okay. All right, so again, this week, unfortunately, we had another mass shooting. This one was in Boulder, Colorado. Uh, they killed uh, 10 people. This guy killed 10 people, including a police officer. He looked like a middle-aged man. The guy is 21 years old. I mean, um, and uh, I don't know what his motive was. Um, but um, again, can you imagine just going to Walmart or to Publix or Food Lion and somebody comes in your aisle with an AK, AR-15 or whatever this guy had, and just boom. This is, I tell you, we talk about this all the time, not for the mercies of the most high go any one of us. And so this is why you want to keep him close. You want to pray that he is looking out for you, that he's going to let a red light catch you so you don't get to that store in time for that type of tragedy. And, 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 and I can't imagine the shock of sending your spouse or your child or your parent goes to the store and then you see on the news that, you know, and they're not answering their phone. I can't imagine. 
I just pray that the creator be merciful to us. And we don't have, to, I don't even want to know anybody that it happens to. It's hard enough to, have, to hear about it happening to strangers. But to think that that can happen to someone. And how do you deal with that? The anger, the frustration, the shock, the, all of these things that we have to go through because people are, you know, out of their minds. And, and, and of course, we don't have proper laws to protect uh, some of these people from the ability to buy guns. It's, it's really a scary thing. Um, you know, they say this is a free country. This is a dangerous country. And I know a lot of people want to have guns, and I get that. And some of us need them because you really need to be able Because if you think about what happened on Black Wall Street, if enough of us had some type of protection, we could have probably saved that town, you know? Um, and so I understand, you know, the need for, for arms, but... Uh, they're getting into the wrong hands and with the people who have the wrong kind of mindset. And that's really a scary thing. I saw a hand in the back, uh, Leah, before I move on. Shabbat Shalom. Um, two things. Um, that they, the, gun shop on, the gun shop owner um, said he passed the background check. So there was nothing for him that flagged him that when he went in and bought that AR, whatever he had, there was nothing that flagged him. He had no misdemeanors or anything like that. So even the gun laws where you're saying you have to go through the background check, it still is not going to catch all the crazy people. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm going to comment on that because the week before that, they turned down a law that would have kept him from getting a gun. Yeah, it's crazy. Uh, the week before that, the, there was a bill that didn't pass that would have done added an extra layer wow. in there. So, so. yeah. They, but um, I also wanted out. to say, you know, we were talking about, you know, going to the grocery store and stuff. I don't know if people are paying attention, but just about every weekend now, either at North Lake or at Concord Mills, they're fighting, they're shooting and all kinds of stuff. So just saying we don't need to be out there because um, the, it's really the teenagers that are kind of just running amok. So just for all of us, yeah. just to be very, very careful. If I go out there, if I have to go is during the week, maybe during the day, but definitely not on the weekend because they said it was actually, it was so bad last week that it was taking people like two to three hours to get out of the mall because people were just spinning up their stimulus checks. So yeah. just for us to all be careful. Yeah, that. most of them went to Las Vegas, uh, by the way. <laughs> That's what I call throwing your money away. But um, what I would say is, um, well, this is what I do. Everybody can't do this. But I, I get to the grocery store at seven o'clock in the morning when they open. The, new, the loonies are not out that early in the morning. I go at seven o'clock in the morning. Okay, 7.30, I'm out of the grocery store. Okay, call me crazy. You know, I don't have a life, I don't know. But I'm in Walmart, if I gotta go to Walmart, seven o'clock in the morning. Um, if I gotta go to any other food store, Seven o'clock in the morning, I write my list and I'm driving in the dark, getting to the grocery store because I just want to get in and get out. I just don't want to be around when something like this happens. And they say, oh, well, you know, when you go in the grocery store, you know, you should see where the exits are. What if you're on the other side of the store? That's just all the mercies of Yah. And there's certain things we can do to protect ourselves and the rest of it, we just have to leave in, leave in the hands of the most high. But it doesn't take much for somebody to go home and get a gun. If they, you know, look, you, the guy that put a guy, this last week happened, I don't have it in my notes. He put somebody out of the store because he wouldn't put on a mask and he turned his back on him. And as soon as he turned his back, the guy went out the door. He turned his back on the guy. He didn't wait for the guy to leave. The guy turned around and stabbed him in the back. He survived it. But he stabbed him because he was upset because he told him he had to wear a mask. I mean, this is what's going on. I mean, it's just that crazy out there. It's, it's really not a good time to be, uh, you know, walking the streets. It's unfortunate. It's not a good time for our children to be raised in this time. But it is what it is. And we're stuck with it. There's not anything we can do about it. We just have to be careful. Just use your wits. Take, you know, I don't want... Everybody shouldn't have to walk around in fear. 
but because you trust in the most high, but you definitely going to have to use some common sense and some strategies about when you do know what's going on around you. Um, you know, and, and if you have protection, bring it with you. Uh, if you can take it with you, you know, get the proper, you know, uh, credentials to do what you need to do because it is scary out there. Did you all see this woman get arrested in the, at the uh, Georgia State House? yesterday or the day before yesterday because she knocked on the door where the governor was signing a law which was going to be one of the laws that they're using to suppress the vote in the state of georgia they're upset that you know they won both of those seats and so they went and they changed the law guess this is one of the things in the law you can't give somebody water that's standing in line you can't give them something to eat that's there. Now, what does that have to do with um, voter identification and things of that nature? These are things that they're doing in order to shorten the time frame. They got to figure out a way. And all, to me, it all it tells black people that want to vote is we got to find a way to get around that. So if I can't hand you water, I'll drop it off on the sidewalk and you can pick it up. You know, I mean, there's got to be a loophole somewhere that that smart people have to figure out in order to defeat the man because they've been this is just the new jim crow method before they would put jelly beans in a jar and tell you to tell us how many are in there or you have to recite the constitution you know that's the type of stuff they did in the 60s 60 years later what's the difference they're doing the same thing to try to suppress the vote because they know that if we outnumber them then we can outvote them and we can be uh the ones in power and they can't stand to think of a black man in power a black woman in power and so we have to just come up with these other strategies that will defeat them we have to educate the people so that they know what they need to do if you need I, what do you call it? A state ID, get the ID well in advance, do different things because the only way that we're going to survive in this country is if we have some power. Otherwise, they're going to be putting their foot, their knees to our necks and they're going to be killing our brothers and our sisters in the streets. So a word to the wise. All right. So I am done with that. And okay. Yeah. Yeah. It passed yesterday. You get if you're waiting to vote. Don't forget, last year they were handing out pizza, they were handing out water uh, to the folks that were online, and because the lines were like four or five hours long, and some people, if they get tired or they, and they're talking elders. Uh, so Don Lemon said, "Why don't they? I want to see what they're going to do. Let's line up a whole bunch of old people and put them on that line and give them water and see if they're going to take them off in handcuffs." So, because the, the outrageousness of it, if it gets caught on camera, if people are going to say, hey, you can't be doing this. Yeah. That's what happened with the water guns and um, the, the water hoses that they put on us. Um, Selma, uh, the, yeah. the, the Ed, El, um, El, Edmund P Pettus Bridge, all of those types of things is what galvanated people in the country, black, white, green, whatever, in order to realize just how racist this country is and law enforcement is. So these are the types of things that they're coming up with. And, um, you know, we're slaves here, so we're not even supposed to have the right to vote. Of course, they did everything they could to stop us, made us three fifths of a man and things of that nature. And they, and all of these things have been countered. So they have to come up with new ways to try to suppress us, to try to hold us back, to discriminate against us. And if we intend some of us to stay in this country for as long as we need to stay here, we need to figure out ways to defeat them because they, if not, they're going to kill us off. They're going to annihilate us. And I'm not trying to be, uh, you know, shy about it. Genocide. So we got to be smart. We're educated. We need to be smarter than them. We know anything that we do, we got to be smarter than them. Okay, so I see two hands, and then I'm going to turn this over to Cohen. I'm not going to do a portion because you have something you want to do, and we want to get everybody out on time. Okay, so I'll take um, a Coke Kepsi by in the back, and then Kamani, I'll take your hand, and then I'm going to step down. Shalom. Um, something that touched my heart this week is um, the killing of Frankie Jennings, 32 on his birthday on, on Parkwood in Charlotte. Um, 
he was shot by a U.S. Marshal. And um, yeah, I'm just so tired of them killing our brothers like this. Like the guy in Ohio, he get to walk away and go to jail and go to court and have a trial. Why are they killing our black brothers like this? Why, do, why don't he have a chance to, why is he dead? I'm sick of it. Okay, I don't know if I can answer your question. <laughs> but I, and I'm not defending the police, don't get me wrong. But, um, you know, there's not a lot of, um, there's not a lot of people protesting because sometimes these killings are justified. I mean, every black man that gets shot is not, un is not unjustified. Um, and I'm not defending them, but I, what I do know is that he had several warrants uh, for his arrest and, and he didn't just get shot by a cop, he got shot by a U.S. Marshal. That tells you that the federal government went in there looking for him for whatever reason. Again, I'm not justifying it. I don't know all the facts. But um, the, the fact that a lot of people are not protesting it tells you something, okay? So black people, especially black activists, they have to be careful the battles that they choose to fight because they know that if it's gonna bring bad publicity, they're not going to take it on. And so you don't hear a lot going on. I don't know if that's gonna change. And again, I'm not justifying it because I don't know all the facts, but I did hear he had several warrants they found a gun at the scene. He must have resisted. There was something else. Now, maybe a, a black, white person would have gotten away. Because keep in mind, um, we don't get the same treatment. We know that. But we have to be careful we don't put ourselves in these types of situations uh, in order to be victimized by them. Because cause and effect is always in motion. Okay? So, you know, he if he's got all of these warrants against him, because the regular police didn't go after him. It was a, a, it was a U.S. Marshal. And so, um, again, um, and, 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 and Black Lives Matter are going to pick their battles carefully because they don't want all of this stuff to go out. The guy was how old? 32. He had a bunch of kids. It's just, you know, there's a lot of stuff going on that doesn't fit the image of what they want to use as a cause that they want to fight. And that's unfortunate. Again, I'm not defending them. I'm just saying that this is some of the things you got to take and keep in mind. And we have to, we, you know, there's more on us. You know, it's our responsibility as a nation to make sure that we train our sons and uh, our daughters to do the right thing. Don't get in the system. You don't get in the system, then, you know, now you got to worry about something else. The same thing with George Floyd. That was just so obvious because it was on camera. But, you know, they found all kinds of drugs in the system. We don't know about the $20. Nobody should die for having a counterfeit $20 bill. But again, if you're walking around, if you're doing things that attract you to them, and then he had something that happened just weeks before, I'm not justifying them. I'm just saying that we as a people have to understand that we have an obligation to do the right thing before the creator. I'm not even talking about the man because they have a different set of rules. But if we do the right thing before the most high, this is what, that's our protection. Our protection is our righteousness. That's our salvation. And we have to do everything that we can to be as righteous before the creator as possible. If not, he's going to give, he's going to send the enemy after us. I didn't get into the portion today. The Philistines coming after the Israelites. Why was that possible? Why could they go in and, and slay our people like that? Because we didn't want to serve the most high. So, I, you know, I, I understand. And I, I'm outrageous. I'm outraged by a lot of the things that happen to our people. But some of us, we cause upon ourselves because we just not living right. Some of us don't know any better, but that's no excuse. The creator doesn't care. He's just going to hold it against us. And, and, and this is all a part of the suffering that we have to go through. I hope I didn't mix that up too much. I hope people understand my position here. Because we have to, we have to live right. And then we all can hit the streets. We all can get out there and fight for the right cause. You can't, you can't have, um, and he had warrants from different states. That's why they had sent the U.S. Marshal. You got a warrant in this state, a warrant for that state for different things that he did. Come on. How long do you think you're going to get away with that? What we do is we commit crimes and then we leave the state. We go to another state, we commit another crime. 
Come on. We just, we just have to be smart, man. We just have to teach our sons and our daughters now even to make sure that we don't go out and, and I'm not talking about the laws of man because they can be kind of crazy, but the laws are the most high. So let's start with those. To me, that's that's how I see it. Come on, here. Go ahead. Please don't throw no tomatoes up here. I'm looking out for the nation too. Shabbat shalom again. Um, this is going back to what you were talking about with the Jim Crow laws. It just sparked something for me that I learned through work and just being more aware of the types of words that we use that we don't even realize the history of the language. And so um, okay. one of the things, one of the laws, Jim Crow laws that were in place to try to suppress us from voting was they would say that you could vote if your grandfather had the right to vote. And the way that that kept us from voting was usually, uh, right, our grandparents were enslaved, so they couldn't vote. So that meant that you couldn't vote. So that phrase, how many of you have said- Grandfathered in. Thank you. When you use the phrase of somebody being grandfathered in, that is where it comes from. And I just learned this recently. So I have been trying not to use that word, knowing what the history is. Um, another thing that has been pointed out to me, which I, I used to say all the time, and I'm trying hard to stop, is to say, when you have a house, what is the main bedroom usually called? Main is a what? Master bedroom. Oh, wow. Right. And that comes from slavery and the master or having the biggest bedroom. So I've been trying to say the main bedroom or the owner's bedroom. My bedroom. Well, right. My bedroom. <laughs> so... <laughs> so I just wanted to bring that to your awareness because there's a whole lot of phrases out there like that that have history that has been detrimental to us that we have to try to just get that wisdom and try to change our language so just wanted to share that knowledge is power knowledge is power and and I love these sessions because the things you learn and um and our youth really need to pay attention because you all don't know how much y'all are missing when you don't, you know, and this is why I want the elders back because I want to talk to them. I want to know what they think. I want to get as much information out of the elders as I can because I know they're not here forever. I'm not here forever. My rule lately has been, I want to teach the future leaders. I'm really focused on the future leaders. I want to teach them and give them as much information as I can because we have to keep this thing going and we have to, we have to elevate what it is to be an Israelite. Does that make sense? We have to elevate what it is to be an Israelite because we have to really pay attention to what is needed for to live in this society and what it means to, 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 to get out of this society and what it's going to take to get out of this society and set up our own society. This is why this is so important. And we have these dialogues because we really want to educate each other and we want to be able to use the information positively and effectively. And so I pray that um, just, I learned stuff today and uh, you know, I'm gonna have to change some of the words in my vocabulary, but um, Yah is great. And I, I thank him for the wisdom that is coming from our younger people, our future leaders. And I pray that he will be uh, most merciful unto all of us and he will continue to open up our minds so that we can learn and grow. And I'm gonna come down now because Cohen, I don't know, he might even need more time than he has. This kind of got kind of long. You may have to shorten that thing you got going on there, Cohen. So um, all praises to the most high. I thank you all for your time and attention. It's been my honor and my pleasure to stand before you and may I bless you and keep you. And I pray that he gives you a beautiful holy season. Shalom, shalom. Come on, you gonna spray? Yeah. All right. Shabbat shalom. All praise to the Most High. We thank our room for that little segment. That's to be the name of Yah. So. We were supposed to do this a long time ago. So usually I try to test our knowledge.
You know, every time we go through the book of Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, Deuteronomy, we usually have what we call the Genesis challenge. I have a Genesis challenge. That's how old it is because so many things was going on. So we're going to have a virtual blockbuster and we do it uh, by means of uh, Kahoot. All right. So Nishare, are we ready? If you have a smartphone, as they call it, you take it out. And those of you that are online uh, can participate. I'm hoping that you can participate as well. Our family online, just take out your cell phone. And uh, those of you who are familiar with Kahoot, we call it Hebrew Kahoot here in the Hebrew family, Charlotte, on the Shabbat. Uh, all those that are here can participate. And uh, Ms. Shadi, if you could just give them the instructions on what to do. Just trying to put some fun in what the knowledge that the Most High has blessed us with. That's all. If you got a phone, you, you know. So, Mishari, tell them what to do about you. Okay, so everybody, if they can go to www.kahoot.it, uh, and you'll be able to go on there and enter the room for the, uh, enter the pin, as you see on your screen here. And that will bring you into the session. So you have to just go to kahoot.it. You don't have to have an account. You can just go to uh, play now and enter this game pin and be ready for the game. If you're using your smartphone, I think you could just go to the website. You don't have to download the app, I don't believe. So you should be good with just going to the website. And what I want to do, family, is the, and, you know, I'll tweak it as we have more of these when I'm able to. So the first place winner, uh, I'll design, I want to design a, a some sort of a certificate of achievement or something and just Give it to that person who was the first place winner for the Hebrew Kahoot, okay? So how will we know if everybody's in? We'll give them a time. We have uh, 42 people in the Zoom call so far. We have 27 in the game. Okay. And we do, some of those that are in the game though, of course are in the room, we'll give everybody I don't know, Kohen, how many minutes you want to give people to get in there? Maybe two more minutes. We'll give everybody two more minutes to get in there. Okay, two more minutes. And we want everybody to settle down now. Don't get excited. Just put your answer in the phone and it'll show on the uh, screen. This is called the Genesis Challenge. Hebrew Kahoot. First place winner will receive uh, a certificate of achievement. All right. Are we ready? Oh, okay. Okay. Make sure you get your knowledge, you know, because we still have Exodus, our uh, Exodus challenge. We finished the book of Exodus, so I'm trying to catch up. I'm late. This is Genesis, so. And then after Leviticus, we'll have a Leviticus challenge. And after Deuteronomy, we'll have a Deuteronomy challenge. Mishada, you let me know when we're ready. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
Well, yeah. You, you say the word, Michelle, when we're ready. Ask the people online. Are they Is everybody that wants to play online in the room? Is everybody online in the room? Those that want to play, are you in the room? All right, I think we're ready to go, Cohen. Okay. Not yet. Who's still trying to get in? All right. Y'all good? Sit so there. Everybody in the room that's playing good? All right. All right. And here we go. Pay attention, everyone. Genesis Challenge. This man was the father of Noah. Hey, Lamech. Oh, I'm sorry. Tera, Lamech, Methuselah, or Enoch. Okay. How much time do they have? Okay, 40 seconds. Okay. This man was, the, was Noah's father. Terah, Lamech, Methuselah, or Enoch? Or Hanok? One more person? Okay. And no cheating, no looking at the not either. Those of you at home. All right. Lamet. So 12 people got it right. Okay. All right. Akolea, she's in first place right now. <laughs> okay. Next challenge. Next question. He was the grandson of Noah. Was it Shem, Mahalalel, Cain, or Canaan? He was the grandson of Noah. Let's go, let's go, baby. Was it Shem, Mahalalel, Cain, or Canaan? Oh, I'm sorry. Brother. Hey, I see you more, right? I see you back there more, right? <laughs> Grandson. Settle down. All right, got a lot of people got it? 15, all right. Okay, let's see who's in first place so far. Okay. All right. Next one. Who was Terah's son? Was it Peleg, Serug, Abraham, or Reu? Who was Terah's son? Peleg, Serug, Abraham or Reu. All right, a lot of people got that one, right? All right, very good, very good. All right, let's see who's still in first place. Uh, Polea, we got Mishadi Natan creeping up on you. <laughs> All right, next one. True or false? Eliezer 
Abraham's servant was from Demona. True or false? True or false? True or false? Eliezer, Abraham's servant, was from Demona. True or false? All right, 25 people got it right. False. He was from where? Damascus. Damashek, or in Hebrew as they call it. All right. Kolei is on fire. True or false? Yishmael was the son of Hagar. True or false? Yishmael was the son of Hagar. True or false? All right, everybody got that one except for one. All right. All right. So is that Akole or Naomi? Oh, Naomi's doing that. Okay. Man. True or false? Abraham was 99 years old when Isaac was born. True or false? Abraham was 99 years old when Isaac was born. Be careful now. Abraham was 99 years old when Isaac was born. Is that true or false? Thanks to my Isha, my, my son, the, the techie of the house, Galiel. <laughs> He's our future, uh, you know, no, <laughs> information systems. All right, it is false. So how old was Abraham? He was 100 when Isaac was born. He was 99 years old when he got circumcised. All right, all right, who's, all right. Okay, she's still in the lead, Naomi. I'm making Yaakov proud today in Kolea. <laughs> How many sons did Yishmael have? Did you have 12, 5, 10, or 15 sons? How many sons did Yishmael have? 12, 5, 10, or 15? Twelve, that is correct. All right. Twenty-five people got it right. All right. Boy, she's 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 coasting right now. <laughs> All right. How many daughters did Lavon have? How many daughters did Lavon have? Did he have five, two, three, or four daughters? How many daughters did Lavon have? Shh. Pay attention. Five, two, three, or four. <laughs> How many daughters did Lavon have? All right. He had two daughters. What were their names? Leah and Raquel. All right. Uh oh, Dantan is in the lead. <laughs> okay. 
All right. Next one. I should have I should have said that the Mishada team were exempt. <laughs> okay. This man was Jacob's brother. This man was Jacob's brother. Was it Abner, Esau, Gilly, or Abimelech? Shall settle down. Settle down. Esau, very good. All right. Next one. True or false? Judah was the sixth son of Yaakov and Leah. True or false? Judah was the sixth son of Yaakov and Leah. True or false? All you got to do is somebody singing the song, right? <laughs> That's cheating. <laughs> and it always helps to remember the, the order of their birth, so... All right, it's false. So who was the sixth son of uh, Jacob and Leah? Zevolun, right. All right. All right, Tomil. Boy, our time is skating, boy. All right, next one. Another true or false. Abraham was 175 years old when he died. True or false? Abraham was 175 years old when he died. True or false? True. He was 175 years old. Congratulations to those who got the right answer. Not time. Whoa. All right, next question. She was the daughter in law of Yehuda. She was the daughter in law of Yehuda. Was it Raquel? Was it Tamar? The Airy? Or Zilpa. She was the daughter-in-law of Yehuda, Raquel, Tamar, Be'eri, or Zilpah. Tamar, 25 people got it. All right. All right. Next question. True or false? Yaakov lived in the land of Egypt 17 years. True or false? Yaakov lived in the land of Egypt 17 years. All right. That was a close one for some, a lot of people. True. He lived in the land of Egypt for 17 years. All right. All right. Next question. Who 
was Isaac's wife. Who was Isaac's wife? Was it Rebecca, Sarah, Bilhah, or Hagar? Who was Isaac's wife? Rebecca? Sarah? Okay. Rebecca. All right. Good job. Natan is just uh, coming away with this one here. How many sons did Yosef have? How many sons did Yosef have? Five, ten, two, or twelve? Don't yell out the answer. Just put it on your phone. How many sons did Yosef have? Five, ten, two, or twelve? Hell, y'all getting the wrong answers. That's why they left. They did it like that, man. You had two sons. We were, what were their names? Menashe and Ephraim. All right. Mm. All right. Next question. What was the name given to Yosef when he was second in command in Egypt? Was it Melchizedek, Zafna Panea, Amraphel, or Abi Malek? What was the name given to Yosef Shh. when he was second in command? All right, 30 people got it. All right. Uh-oh, we got some other people uh, coming up. True or false? Timna was Rebecca's nurse. True or false? Timna was Rebecca's nurse. True or false? True or false? True or false? Timna was Rebecca's nurse. False. Correct. What was her name? Devorah. All right. All right, Naftali's creeping up on you. <laughs> All right. Wow. Oh, Naomi. You got to do a comeback, Naomi. Okay. Isaac was 65 when Yaakov and Esau were born. True or false? Isaac was 65 when Yaakov and Esau were born. True or false? True or false? Isaac was 65 when Yaakov and Esau were born. True or false? Just going back to your, you know, your memory of Genesis. <laughs> wow. False. How old was he? 60. He was 60. All right. All right. Next one. After the flood, Noah's ark rested on this mountain, Sinai, Gilead, Ararat, or Babel. After the flood, Noah's ark rested on this mountain, Sinai, Gilead, Ararat, or Babel. Uh, yeah, Isha's cheering you on, Naftali. She's cheering you on. She said, okay, Naftali. Okay. So the answer was Ararat. I don't know. We missed that real fast. It was Ararat. All right. 
Okay, we got two more. How many trained men did Abraham have in his house? 218, 300, 200, or 318? How many trained men did Abraham have in his house? 218, 300, 200, or 318? All right, so 10 people got it. 318 trained men. That's what he had. All right. So, is this the last one? Is this a bonus question my Isha came up with? All right, this is the last one. Bonus question. Okay. How old was Sarah when she died? 118, 137, 127, or 120? Bonus question. Yeah. <laughs> you go come up. You come up. You want to make a comment, you said? <laughs> okay. <laughs> Bonus question. 118, 127, 120. 19 people, 127. All right. All right. So the first place winner is. No, that's that's third. Second is OBY. I don't know who that is. First place. Not time. All right. <laughs> okay, so the runners up, hold on. The runners up was Saw and Zahira. So we let's give them a hand as well. <laughs> All right. So I'm thinking whether or not I'm going to do, and Kamani, what do you say? Should we do first place winners or do first, second, and third place winners that they get a certificate? Just first? Say that again. Just first. All right, so Ms. Shade Natan will get the first certificate of achievement for the Hebrew Kahu for the Genesis Challenge. Hallelujah. Give them a round of applause. Let's welcome them back up to the Mizbiak Tefillah. Hallelujah. I'm sure his Isha and his bot are very proud right now. Yeah, yeah, it's okay. No, no, no. Shabbat shalom, Opa'am. So, um, all I'm going to say is, y'all some sore losers. <laughs> Just because I'm a missionary, I can't have fun with y'all? All right, I'm going to remember that for next time. It's all right. I was going to say, you know, if I get first, then honorary, whoever got second, let them really get first. But get the brotherhood, we still got it. I just don't know what to tell y'all. You know, brotherhood, we hold it down. Even if I put my that one first place at the side, the light still got it. <laughs> I'm sorry. I had to just go there for a minute. <laughs> yes, yes. <laughs> hey, brotherhood power. Don't worry, I can step down next time because I know we're in good hands, all state. Okay, look out for the Exodus challenge soon. Definitely, that was a lot of good fun. Toda Raba. So, um, everybody, just as we move into our closing segment of the day, um, if we could all stand up and let, let's sing a song or two unto Yah. I'm looking outside and it's still uh, a little bit bright. So before we move into our evening prayers, uh, let, let's sing another song unto Yah.
Let's uh, bless the name of the creator with Baruch Hashem found on page 78 in our song book. Baruch Hashem, Shel Yahuwah. Baruch Hashem, Shel Yahuwah. Baruch Hashem, Shel Yahuwah. Hashem, Baruch Hashem, Shel Yahuwah. Blessed be the name of Yahuwah. Blessed be the name of Yahuwah. Blessed be the name of Yahuwah. Blessed be the name, blessed be the name of Yahuwah. Who no tain a name, who my am God. Who no tain a name, who my am God. Who no tain a name, who my am God. Who no tain let him, who no tain let him, who my He gives us bread and our water too. Yah gives us bread and our water too. He gives us bread and our water too. Yah gives us bread, Yahuwah gives us bread, and our water too. Baruch Hashem, Shel Yahuwah. Baruch Hashem, Shel Yahuwah. Baruch Hashem, Shel Yahuwah. When I wake up in the morning, I got to praise Yah's name. When I wake up in the morning, I teach my kids to do the same. Yahweh is great, He's also great. I got to praise His name, I just can't wait. Yahuwah is king, Yahuwah is king of heaven and earth. When I wake up in the morning, I got to praise God's name. When I wake up in the morning, I teach my kids to do the same. Yahuwah is great. He's also great. I got to praise his name. I just can't wait. Yahuwah is king. Yahuwah is king of heaven and earth. Baruch Hashem. Shehel Yahuwah. Baruch Hashem. Shehel Yahuwah. Baruch Hashem. Baruch Hashem, Shil Yahuwah. Hallelujah. Let's sing Ha'azin Ali. Found on page 75 in our prayer books as well. Ha'azin Ali, Ani Yodek Ani. O me pole fane ka ka asherani margish me aye o zekra ele ka el yahua zadi devoka 
как матурака ие, как аму, о селе мобо, чему ахали веко, меж пати, аси хо мец вот, беру кат Mi no ten mi ma akila moko hasman meleka olam bore haaret hu mo shi enu shemo ya hoa. Hallelujah. All praise be to Yah Yisrael. Even at this time, as we prepare ourselves for our evening prayers that we say together, found on page 18 in our prayer books, and it will also be shared as well for our family online to say along with us. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Sacrifices and meal offerings are not found in our hands. Father of mercies, yet thy law standeth firm. Accept the words of our lips and the murmurings of our hearts. Receive our prayers in mercy and in favor. Grant us joy and gladness. Comfort thy people. Jehovah answer thee in the day of trouble. The name of the power of Israel set thee up on high. Draw us not away, Yah, with the wicked, for our delight is in thy word. Let thy word heal us and cause us to prosper. Cause thy wisdom to blanket Israel. Let the visions of the righteous be our lot. Yea, even the dreams of thy redeemed, our good fortune. Draw us with cords of love and let our borders be true. Into thy hand I commit my spirit. All praises unto thee, O Yah. We have thought of thy loving kindness. 
we rejoice in the house of Yah. Come behold the works of Yah and rejoice in the same. For he hath rescued his people Yisrael. He has called forth the dispersed of Yaakov. He causes righteousness to stand where calamity was. For such is our power forever and ever. He will be our God henceforth eternally. Sing his praises aloud. Hallelujah. Shema. Shema. Yisrael. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Ain Elohe. Miko. Ain Elohe. Miko. Ain Elohe. Yah, Yisrael. Who put a cold divarim? Torobah, Yoho, Bishop of Cayeno. Yoho, ha Elohim, El Neaman, ha El Yong, where a El Shaddai. Elohe, Mishpak T. Baruch Shem Kevod Le Olam Wael Yehovah Zebaot. O merciful, O great King, glory and honor to thy great name. We thank you, O Yah, for blessing us to make it throughout another week, even as we come to the close of a holy Shabbat, O Yah. We thank you, Yehovah, for being there for us, for watching over us, for providing for us, O great King on high. We thank you, Yehovah, for being mindful of us, for even keeping us in relatively good health, for keeping us strong, keeping us together as a family, O great King on high. We thank you, Yah, for this holy season that we're in right now, even the season of Pesach, O Yah. We thank you that you allow us to continue the cycle of life as we came from a dormant time now to the time of the Abib. Where things start to bud and blossom and things come to life, O Yehovah. And we thank you that you have blessed us to be a part of this wonderful life that we have. Asking and praying that you will continue to watch over us and be there for us, O Yah. That you will help us, O great King, and to continue to strengthen us. Help us as we go out and as we come in. Help us as we go to the base that fell, Yah, and as we go to our vote out. We ask and we pray that you will help our actions and our deeds to be right and one with thee, O great king. Bless our mind, bless our intent, bless our actions, O Yah, to be holy and righteous before you. Show us thy right way, O Yahuwah. Let thy Torah be in our inward parts. Allow us to learn from the mistakes that we have done, O Yah, to only refine and become greater before thee. We ask that you will remember our elders, O Yah, continue to strengthen them. Continue to allow them to lead us in a way that we shall go. We ask that you will bless our mind to receive the wisdom that they share. And that you will give us the discipline that we need, O Yah, that we will only grow and become better before thee. We pray to you, O Yah, that you will remember all those who are in need, those who are less fortunate, O great King. Those who may not have, O Yah, we ask and we pray that you will provide for them. We ask, O oh great King, that you will give us a heart of flesh, that we will have a desire to want to help out those that are in need. Oh, yeah. Your whole even continue to help Amka Yisrael, thy people, O oh Yah. Please continue to help all humanity, O oh Yah, even all the people that you have created to walk upon this earth. You provide for us in so many different ways in our lives, and we give thanks into thy name. 
We thank you for the setting that we have here today to even come together to learn, to grow, to even learn more about thy ways and thy Torah, Yah. We thank you for our Rabbi Baruch who was able to come here today. He's going to bless us with a powerful portion. We thank you, O Yah, for all the Mishra team and the Morim and the people that have came, come before thee to speak, to even regenerate thy people, O Yah, to feed us, O great king. And we pray to you, O Yahweh, that you will be with us for your high and holy name's sake. Remember those who are mourning at this time. Nice. Remember those who are sick at this time, oh yeah. Nice. We pray for our family. We ask that you will even hear our prayer. That you will even heal us, oh yeah. And that we will be able to come back stronger. That we will be able to come back healthier. That we will be able to come back even more, um, more just um, stronger and, and just in a way, oh yeah, that we will be better before the old great king. Sometimes we may have a loss of words, oh yeah, but you know the pain that we feel. Amen. And I pray that you'll continue to be with us. We pray for those who may be sick at this time. And we lift up those in prayer. Remember, O Yah, Baba Kusha, Kushavya, Bat Mishare Gabriel. Remember, O Yah, Tiskorna, Kohen Pinkas, Bain Aaron, Bain Levi, O Yah. Baba Kusha, Yahoo, Tiskor, Mishpak T, Hanaftali, where Alan, Mish family, O Yah. Bavakusha, remember our brother, even in Atlanta, the house of Yisrael, Mori Elkanon, and his family. We ask and we pray that you'll remember the Ima of our sister, Akot Tamar. Continue to strengthen her and be with her, oh Yah. Granny, who I've on many occasions had the opportunity to come in contact with her, please continue to bless her and bless her, her children, oh Yah. Please remember Connie Jenkins this day, oh Yahuwah. We ask and we pray that you'll please remember Yosef free this day, oh Yah. Praying that you will remember Deanna free this day, O Yah. And all those that we may not have mentioned this day, but you know the spirit and you know the pain that we feel, the struggles that we have, O Yah, on so many different levels. We pray that you will help us and be there for us, not for anything great that we have done for Yah and holy name's sake. Glory and honor to thy great name forever and ever, for thou art the king and thou art the king alone. Besides thee, O Yah, there is none. You spoke and brought everything into existence, and we thank you to be a part of your creation. Oh, your, Yah, allow us to continue to glorify thy name and to continue to do thy will here on earth. Blessed be thy great name forever and ever. Hallelujah. 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 Yochai. 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 Chaya. Chaya. And even in the tongue of our ancient forefathers, we recite this prayer together. Baruch Yehoah Baboquer, Baruch Yehoah Be Zohoraim, Baruch Yehoah Be Erev, Baruch Yehoah Balaila, Baruch Yehoah Yom Yom, Uvaruch Yehoah Tamid, Yehoah Eloheinu Babakusha, Lishloach Lanu Leko Devarim, Raim Sheasinu Lefanecha Yom Yom, Lirioti Manu Ko Halaila Haze, Lamaan Shimka Yehoah. Elohe Abraham Yitzchak with Yisrael, Elohe Avotena with Eli, Lishmoa Bekolina, Im Tereteotcha, Lamaan Shimka Yehoah. Hallelujah! 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 Kaya! 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 O Shema Israel, Yahweh Eloheinu, Yahweh. Hallelujah. At this time, as we 
Sleek off. Oh, it's still not sundown yet. But so there. All right, so we can sing another or yeah, we can sing another song until we get to the 150 if we got time to time to spare. Okay, okay, let's sing a song. Let's sing Psalm 97. Let's sing We Praise Yah. Oh, well, we, you want to get to my gear. They, they, they much rather hear your voice, Coen. They tolerate me, but they'd rather hear your voice. I, was, I wasn't going to sing that song, but... No, 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 whatever you want to um, sing. You, yeah. you sing, uh, uh, let's, let's, uh, give me a beat and then, uh, actually, you know what? I want everybody in their proper places, all drummers. So you the first bass man. <laughs> <laughs> Let's get a, a six eight, six eight. All right, but I need just your uh, backup voices also, right? Come on, brothers. Help him out, runners. Apologize. Are you ready? Come on. Let's call it all, sir. If I can hear him, do the mass. Hallelujah. 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 Come on, let's sing now. Israel, 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 Israel,
Space now. Come on. Come on. Come on. All right, let's go out on this one now. We do it all the other. Let's go out with a bang now, okay? Our Passover's coming in tomorrow evening, so let's show y'all that we're ready. Come on. We saw that you're going to back up. <laughs> Shake me out for leading us in those songs and praises unto Yah Yisrael. And now that we have approached the sunset, we are going to now end off with the infamous 150th song. Okay, sleek our family. They corrected me. I need the correction. Told her. Kane, Kane, Kane. Uh, sleek our family. Sleek our. We are a team. Kane, yes. Yerareka, Yehoah, we Yishmareka. Yaer, Yehoah, Panawileka, we Kuneka. 
Yisa Yehoah Panawe Lecha, we Yasim Lecha, Shalom. May Yah bless thee and keep thee. May Yah lift up his face upon thee and be gracious unto thee. May Yah lift up his countenance upon thee and give thee peace. Hallelujah. Kaya. Shabbat shalom, Nicole. If you all may please be seated. 